Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, man. How you doing? Dude, what a day it's been in the last one hour of being awake. Yeah, it's been, it's been oh pretty crazy. God. Yeah, so I, uh, wait one second. What is going on in my audio? Okay. Let me turn this thing on so I can't hear my... Sorry, man. It's, oh my gosh. It's, yeah, I uh, ended up sleeping at like 6 a.m. last night. Uh, some friends came over and I was like dude I gotta go to bed on time so we can have this coaching session because <laughs> as you know it was last minute because I've been getting hammered on the ladder man uh, and then uh, uh, for a second I was thinking a different kind of hammered <laughs> with, <laughs> with your friends coming over till six <laughs> no on on the ladder and uh and so then I woke up and it was like I set an alarm for 1 p.m okay realistically like last minute whatever so I could at least shower got in the shower and then as I'm done, I realize all the freaking towels are missing, and I have like a hand towel and like a like a two-inch square napkin-sized towel. Yeah. And I'm, it's like ten minutes before our coaching session. I'm trying to freaking wipe all that down, and then I go to turn on my computer, and the freaking liquid pump on my PC isn't booting up. So I'm getting errors, and I'm trying to shake the damn PC to get the water to start. And it's like two minutes, and then thankfully you started your cannon rush. I was actually hoping you'd play a longer game so I'd have more time. And then I popped my bagel in and I freaking bit into it and realized I accidentally put sour cream instead of cream cheese. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been rough getting to this moment, but I'm you're very all good, you're thankful all good, man. and excited that we're... I, uh, nor normally, like I, just to talk about your story, I've actually done, I've had the shower thing happen to me before where I have like a little hand towel and I have to dry off with that. And then you have to like <laughs> hold it as like you walk around with it. It's really awkward. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, you're all good. If you, if you start like, end up, like, obviously if you start on time, that's cool. But if you end up starting like 10 minutes late, it's not that big of a deal. Especially on a day like today where I'm genuinely just chilling out. I'm not, I have nothing else scheduled after this. So it's really just, this is it. And then just a normal chill stream after that. So you're all good. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the last minute notice. Um, really appreciate it. I, I can give you a quick update of sure. where I am. Okay. So... Let me even, I can, um, well, it's fine. I was going to share my screen. I had taken some notes from our last session. But anyway, bottom line is, I think, uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot, definitely. A lot of streamlined things from last time about even in the, the opening foundation of the game, the overlord placement, getting your second queen, your queen on your natural to spread the creep. So my creep's been getting better. My uh, Overall, I think my first three bases getting saturated faster and stuff, it's more streamlined. But um, in in uh, against Terran and against Protoss, I'm just still finding myself, uh, whether it's engagements or I'm just finding myself lost. I'm just lost. Okay, that's what it is. Sure. I'm just lost. Once I hit, once I begin the fourth base, probably even sooner, you'll realize I'm just lost. I don't know what to do. Um, I think my engagements are bad. I think I don't have a clear plan, even though Zerg is supposed to be active. I don't have a general idea of what the hell I should be doing, so I kind of get caught up unsure. And so what usually happens is the way I end up winning is because someone attacked me. I went from 60 drones to 44, and I just go all in from there and I win. But, you know, I want to be good at this game, and so I, I should really learn to macro and sure. play a balanced game. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, I mean, it... it Reactive play can be something as simple as finding out what kind of attack they're opening with and then baselining a strat around that. It doesn't have to be like consistently changing your comp every two minutes. Uh, and then once you kind of get like get the ball rolling with whatever you want to go for, going into like your it, it, like identifying when you can take a macro cycle of economy like drones. And then once you're done with that, it's just slamming out units as fast as you can like the whole time and then just really trying to control the game. Uh, right. So it's not it's not as complicated as you think. It's just really feeling confident to do that and doing it fast enough as well to make sure you're not dying while you're doing that, I guess. And there's things that can tell you how to do that, like seeing if someone's going to not take a third base or something. Uh, then definitely don't saturate a fourth. You're going to totally die if you do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's true. I think so. I think I think when and kind of the, the rhythm to get some of those reads as well as uh, what should be happening while some of those things are going on. Because you know you're very good at um, obviously. But while this is happening, make sure you've got your upgrades going on. While this is happening, make sure you remember to do that layer yeah. or whatever. I think that rhythm is not there for me. And even though the, your videos are really helpful, I still feel like, you know, the heavenly voice through my ears <laughs> is yeah, sure, no problem. my yeah, favorite way. I got you, man. Well, we'll personalize the Brown Ranger experience. 
Okay, well, that's at least the next best option since I'll never earn your VFAM card, I guess. <laughs> and who knows what that is. So. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the illustrious card that you'll only win, or you'll only get it if you win, like, constant uh, predictions that I only run maybe once a month. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe you'll get enough points at some point oh, when, you're, when you're 50. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'll keep uh, living and dreaming and hoping. Let's see. Uh, but yeah. Uh, anyways, we uh, did you uh, what? Did you have a couple of replays you wanted to go over, or uh, what are you thinking about doing today in terms of like starting it yeah, up? Yeah, so I'm a bit double-minded um, because on the one hand, I do have a couple of replays that I saved. Sure. I'm just I just don't know if, but I look back at them and it's like I feel like the biggest thing is my engagement was bad or things like that. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm double-minded because I don't know if we want to go through an entire replay you know for like 45 minutes of, and they pick every little thing okay um so if you want maybe you can take a look at it and holistically maybe these are the one or two biggest impacts mm. and then we can get into playing or we can just play um and you can kind of see where you think you know where my eye you may just see from my screen that i have a clear issue with sure. the way i'm La last time did we did we do a thing where you just played ladder and i watched you play ladder Yep, yep. Okay. Do you want to do that again? I think that'd be a lot of fun. Sure. Okay. Uh, just uh, share your screen with me, and I'll uh, I'll give you some back seating while you play. <laughs> Let me do this, and then you know I can't know I can't tell if the audio comes through or not. I don't know if you care. I, th I think your people probably prefer your World of Warcraft music anyway. Uh, it, it's, you, won't, you won't hear the zergling screaming. I don't know. If it if it comes through, I th I think it should. Uh, if if it doesn't, that's fine. One second here. Screen one. Go live. All right. Okay. And then I. There you go. And. Okay. Uh, and then. Can you see? Yeah, I can see. Uh, I'm putting it over on the main oh, stream yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. You know, sorry. Let me just grab a glass of water. Sorry. Give me like 30 seconds. Yeah, no worries. Take your time. Yo, Asma, lol. Thank you very much for the prime. Thank you very much for the prime. What up, dude? <laughs> I want to see and learn. Oh, this is you want to see and learn Protoss? This is gonna be a Zerg session. Sorry, man. I was actually wondering if you have like. Oh, by the way, I don't know how long you want to go for. I know we I have you know. It's up to you. It's a, it, I, we can just play it by how it feels, I guess. If uh, okay. I mean, if you, it's really your call. Uh, I'm if you want to go two hours today, I'm willing to go two hours. It's all good. Uh, because like, like okay. I said before, I have nothing else going on after this. But if you want to stop at one and uh, just schedule something for a later date, we can do that too. Well, I, I, we, two hours would probably be better just because of how, you know, well, we'll see, but yeah. Sure. Um, okay, so unranked or ranked doesn't really matter, right? I think it, they're all the same. Now so it depends how much you play it because they, they share the same player pool, but they have different MMRs. So if you never play unranked, you're going to be playing people that might be like 2K MMR because your MMR might be really low. Oh, yeah. I think this is fine then. Yeah, I've been playing unranked and ranked. Um, it doesn't matter. They're, it's all the same. It seems the same skill level. One thing is, if we do a ZVZ, do you mind? Can I just quit? Because I feel like yeah, I don't versus Terran versus Protoss it's, are the ones I want to focus on. That's totally fine. I, uh, I'm i not going to be like, what the fuck? You get the fuck back in that game now. <laughs> that's totally fine. <laughs> okay. And then if we have time, maybe in the last hour, I was thinking instead of Z uh, uh, StarCraft coaching, we could do some life coaching. Maybe talk a little bit more about Blizzard versus Activision, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you want to do. <laughs> this is your coaching lesson. We'll make... We'll cater it to whatever your needs are. Oh, you got a Protoss. Okay, it's the first game of the day. I didn't get time to do any warm up, but here we go. Okay, yeah, evil you know. Putty, thank you for the nine. Much, okay, much love, dude. Key, Appreciate the sub. Freaking Overlord to the thing. I usually do this the next drone, and then I kind of have the APM to pre hammer hot, camera hotkey my other locations. You have to do a gastric now as well because you droned to fourteen. Oh, I'm supposed to drone to thirteen. Yep. Uh, every oh game is God. a 13 drone, and then Overlord, then drone again. Because now you're going to Larva Cap if you don't make an, a gas trick. 
So gas truck yeah, is just guess. you just build a gas and then build a oh, drone. I should have. Oh, you okay. have to. Yeah, you have to do it now. You're, or it doesn't. It now just it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, it's you're all good. Uh, sorry, I just realized my freaking YouTube just like started randomly playing. That's <laughs> all good, man. Okay, well he just did not pay attention, so that's okay. So you keep making drones. Go to 18. Yeah, rallying the 17th drone to the gas is correct, and then the way you're rallying the eggs is correct because those are the two you're going to use. Correct. Keep making drones. <clears throat> And don't even make an overlord at uh, 20 or whatever, or 19. Just make drones. Okay. Because you're going to get more supply from the natural finishing anyways. And you, you can make an overlord. Oh, yeah, I should just make drones right now, you're saying? Yeah. Not make the yeah, make the overlord like when you make the queens. Like a little bit, like maybe in like five seconds after you make the queens. Because you, okay. can, you can literally just get away with more drones right now. And the Protoss, if he's not cannon rushing you, there's nothing okay. he can do to punish that. Oh, okay. So I'm going to, should I just keep making drones from now, I guess? Yeah, yeah no yeah. reason uh -huh. to stop. Uh-huh. Because he's like starting a unit right now, and that's 30 seconds. This is early. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's somewhat early. Agreed. That seems like it could be a core before Nexus, and it totally is. So, but look look at his gateway and core. It's huge, huge information. Notice how they're oh, both right, doing right, nothing. Right. Okay, now the core is doing right. something. So, he might have thrown down like a council or something. Uh, it's possible. Leave one drone on, leave one drone on gas. And then fly into his main with your overlord. Okay, and so, now, did you start an overlord? Oh, he's, he's making something. I started. I only started one though. It's okay. Well, yeah, I would say you can start another one now. So, if you make it right when, like, pretty much like right around the time you make the queens, it should pop out before the queen finishes. And yeah. then, uh, and then you're gonna have 36 like you do now. And then you make another one when you're like at, right now, like 32, when you get the okay. rest of your larva spent. You can, oh, got it. Yeah, and then you can take your third base really fast this way because you get more drone money. And I guess actually, I just realized. Also, what's up? Okay, so he's. Yeah, just take Sorry, take a different base. Me. Also, uh, you're not scouting enough in the base. You have no idea what tech he's going for. I know you're dealing with the adept though. It's annoying, but you got to scout more. Make sure you okay. inj inject. Both bases. Scout with the Overlord when you oh, can. Oh, should I freaking did that? Okay, okay. Oh, this guy? Yeah. Over here? Yeah. Find out what tech he's going for. Okay, oh, so. Twilight and freak. Okay. okay uh, keep uh, keep droning. You killed the Adept, so you don't got to worry about making Lings yet. Actually, you, you, you could now that you have a fully saturated natural, now you, uh, good job on the Rich Warren. That's correct. You could now make uh, like 12 Lings just to uh, scout around the third bases and shit because you're fully saturated now. And it's like around three. Your speed just finished recently, so like 20 seconds ago. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Although, yeah, okay. Sorry. I, uh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna. Koopa, thank you for the 15, the, dude. I just woke up, so I don't it's think okay. my uh, shit is going well. And I, my Kroop Trimmer, I, I don't yeah. know why I injected yeah. this instead of doing whatever I did. It's okay. Also, you need to make another queen when you can. Okay, you did. Good job. Uh, you should make another one again. Uh, get one of those queens going to your third base from the main. And then, uh, like, throw a creep tumor down and go to the third. Like, connect the main and the natural. Right. Uh, one of those queens should stay at the main, though. I think you said both. Okay, now I would say take your layer. And... Okay, I think that... Yeah. Yeah, check, check the first... Like, keep making drones like crazy right now. And check for thirds with your lings. Try not to take fights. if Unless it's really easily going to win. Like, that's going to win. But check for thirds. While you make drones, and re oh, okay, okay. re rally, like just don't let him have a third for free, if if it's right. de deniable. But make sure you make drones. You have a lot of money right now. And then take your once you get your third base with like eight drones on it, start making gases, like two more gases. Yeah, you're a little early, but it's okay. Keep making drones. Okay, uh, now there's no third, and it, it, so you, what you need to do now is scout him again in the main with the Overlord, and push your fucking Lings into the fucking base, into the, his natural for a second. Don't die, but just 
poke his door and see how many units he has because five minutes, no third is very fucking all in. Yeah, you didn't really see much. I, want, I kind of wanted to go into the wall a little bit and see oh, if he's got okay, units okay. behind it. You like right now, if, if, if there's like eight gates and a lot of units, you need to make roaches or you're dead. Go in, just go in, just go in, go, 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 go. Or, never mind. Yeah, fuck, there's like a little bit of delay from. It's okay. Hesitation. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Right now, you're trying to find, find out why the fuck does he not have a third? Because where is his money going? Oh, wait, what if he's being DTs or something? No, right? no, what no. It's, he, it's, uh... it's, it's, it's not going to be DT, really. I mean, he could. You can easily make one over here and you're fine. Uh, it's really about how many gates he has. No third means lots of gate. Uh, okay. I would say take it, take a fourth, and uh, stop making lings altogether now. Only make roaches for now, and then you can start a hydrogen and two evos. And tr I would just honestly tell you to squeeze out more oh, drones right. right now, because this game is. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm at six, I'm, I'm actually way lower than I should be right you now. You are huh? definitely way lower he than you should he be. He isn't doing nothing. He isn't yeah. doing anything. Like you might get all in right now, but you have like a very low drone count for what you should have right now. Okay. If you start making units, you're so fucking far behind if he takes a third. Send your lings you have, again, to go check for a third again. And these lings all should have been drones, honestly. I uh, mean, they should have been drones, yeah. you're saying, right? Yeah, you, they, you only wanted to make the initial set. Okay, he's, he's attacking you, so make roaches. Roaches. Bring those lings back and make nothing but roaches now. This is why I was saying, like, this is going to be rough for you a little bit, but it's still defendable. Just make roaches. Don't stop injecting and engage with roaches and lings together initially. You can go for it right now. Make sure you don't stop on the ramp. Go further down so it doesn't force field you out. Okay, those force fields were awful. Okay. <laughs> Keep making roaches. Overpower him. Kite a little bit. Because you're getting hit by zealots and you don't have to. Like, go backwards a little bit. Okay, no, you're fine. Keep making roaches. One more set and then you're good to go. Good job on starting upgrades. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't stop injecting. You need to inject pretty bad. All bases. Get that queen back to the natural so you can inject again from your third. I had a... I just, sorry, I, I think I just sent a queen there. I should know which freaking queen I sent. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Just grab one of them from your net third base because you have two. And send one back to the natural. Uh, you, sent, you just sent your main queen to the natural as well. Pull that one back. Or you, yeah, Okay, sorry. you're good. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I kind of had to hey, do a little right. last minute reorganization did there. You, did you get roach speed? No. Definitely get that. Get a infest. So fix fix your economies first of all, and then look at your drone count on the top right. Make go up to about eighty right now because you just want to fight. So make a full round of drones. Now you should be around eighty one, and then I want you to make an infestation pit, and then I want you to uh, grab all of your units and you know keep them in the middle of your base. Creep do a round of creep spread. And take another base again now, like in top right or bottom middle. Doesn't matter either way. And now start making hydras. And you can defend this next attack. Be very careful about that immortal. Yeah, focus fire him if you can. Otherwise, try not to get too fucked here. Your top right base is getting hit by something too. Yeah. I'm gonna just, just deal keep, with it, I guess. Sure. Keep making hydras. Just run honestly run the drones. There's too many zealots. Run the drones. They're like just mineral walk them to your third base or something. There you go. And then you get grab grab your units, put them together, and defend your third first. Let the fourth die to Zealots, if it has to be that way. Okay, he's running away, so now you can go defend your third. Or the, the top base is what I mean. And then make drones again, because you just lost. No spines. Cancel spines. Do not even do that. It's a waste of your money. Just make drones right now, and make overlords, because you also lost some overlords. Also, I don't know if you just made lings again, but make sure you're definitely not making lings right now. Uh, you know what? I think I just made hydras, but I can't. You should remember, be making be hydras. Honest. Yeah. You should now. When you get a second, start hive. And cancel the upgrade on the hive or on the on the layer, and just me immediately start hive, and then start a lurker in with it. Okay. It's inject your bases. All of them. Fix your all of your economies wherever you can. Where it looks fucked up, like your like fix the natural to your fourth again. You have thirty three yep. and two. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, shit. No, yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, okay. A little bit more. Yeah, you have the seven more that you can take off. Now you get two more. You can take off again, and you can saturate your gases off your natural. You're still over. All right. And then take your next base again. That's the original plan. Check your upgrades for Evo Chambers. 
when you can. Start them up. And then go back into making hydras one more time. And then uh, get ready now to look at your hive. You're about, your hive's probably almost done. So get ready for your lurker den that's almost done as well. In about like 10 seconds to start upgrades. Just start both at once. Okay. Uh, you can do something like just spread creep while you're waiting. It's all good. Or inject or something. So you're not just staring at it. But then remember, to, bad. remember to do this though after you... So now you can go back and do upgrades like right now. Okay, start both. Dude. Now start like 10 lurkers. And now grab your lings and go scout the edges of the map. Be like, where is this base at? And if they die, they die. It's totally fine. Because uh, you, you've you all you've made it all the way now to lurker, which is you've bypassed the hydra phase, which is you should honestly the be able to... Should I get rid of these fly? Or yeah, you get rid of them. Honestly, send roaches out too. Yeah, get rid of them. That's fine. Uh, you shouldn't be able to have lurkers when you're maxed out initially, but the only reason why you do is because he attacked you and it slowed the game down. So in okay. good job injecting. Transfer drones around. Do one. Uh, get ready for the attack, bro. Your lurkers and where they need to be, in front of the middle of your base. You can see him coming in the middle of the map right now. He's like right behind those bushes. And then uh, take a second. Fix your economies as well. Don't attack yet. Just fix your economies. Send them elsewhere. Take another base as well, because this base is now going to be fully saturated, pretty much. Yeah, this is actually... Okay, that's fine. What's up? We'll... No, no, no. Okay. In, 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 I, yeah, all all, you, all you need to do right now is make sure your economy doesn't suck dick. And then on top okay. of that, make sure your upgrades are rolling. And then finally, when you max out, go pressure his and make try can to make... Can I uh, put some defense here because this guy's trying to... Yeah, 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 that's fine. Now. Go, I would say your priority should be moving your army first though, not making static D. Because if you let oh, him zone right. you, then you're going to get fucked. It's going to be just harder to defend now if he's already in your middle line. Okay, so this fight is over. Check your drones, make drones. Whatever you need to make, make drones. The top right, you can mouse over it and check your drones. You have 83. Okay, you're good. Your drone count's good. Three. Okay, so here's what you need to do, okay? put uh, Take three lurkers and put one in your main. Put. Uh, I want you to take them out of your control group as well. One in your main, yeah. one okay. in your very top right base, and one in your very bottom middle base. And I like, put them all in the middle line, like you just did. Correct. And now burrow them all when they get there. And then leave them there forever. And now, at every base, make like two spines and a spore. Just do it really fast. And then also make like 12 drones. Put the spore and spine in your middle line, though. Again, don't put them super far exposed like that. Like, yeah. Like, that's a little bit that better. Okay? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Like, you, don't, you want the lurker to cover them. And you don't want them to be so isolated that they're just getting like fully surrounded. Yeah, that's better. Do every base. And now he's doing. He's attacking bottom base, so you can go rotate now. Oh, my lurkers. Oh, I didn't unborrow them. And then and I don't know how I just lost so many lurkers it's a, it's out a, of it's my... It's okay. Oh, I guess they just died. Okay. And they just made, yeah, you can always make some more. Get the lings to go suicide again uh, for now. I think I actually make them. Okay. If, if, you have enough, if you have enough money to actually max out on Lurker Hydra, you should actually have no lings most of the time. Got it. Okay. It's only when you're playing hyper-aggressive that you should be using lings as well because you're, you're like throttling your gas super hard. Because, yeah, like, Lings are going to do nothing versus his Colossus. Here's the run-by was good, though. They let it do whatever it's going to do. Don't even micro it. Just make Lurkers with the supply that dies. And, uh, like, top right's getting attacked. So now you can see this guy keeps doing this, right? So make, like, five more spines up there right now. Grab drones and just make, like, five more spines around the mineral line again. And then make more drones. And then do it on the other base as well, on the outside. If you want to make sure that these Zealot attacks can't fuck you over. Just, it's... it's Huh? This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One? yeah, yeah. Like bases that are ex the most exposed. Okay. Because the way Protoss attacks you is they either attack with the prism in the heart of your base, which is your main, or they attack on the sides of the map, which is going to be always your furthest exposed expansion. Because if they go through the middle of the map, they'll be running on your creep spread. And that's also something that you need to be doing a lot more of. Your creep spread this game is like really, really atrocious. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's fine. <laughs> This is oh, this is uh, the last time someone don't played this badly. It. Just fucking play. It's okay. You're okay, all good. Sorry. No, no, no. You know what? I just realized. I think I probably didn't wake up yet because the last time someone played this bad, 
you definitely shit on their play so badly in the replay. And this is definitely that game. Well, you're like, you're also doing, not a diamond player at you're, all. You're doing like, live, I don't know what he was doing. Yeah, you're doing live coaching, which is way harder as well because you're playing while talking. Uh, so remake your go up to like 12 lurkers and then remake the rest of Hydras. And all right, check your drone count too. What's your drone count look like? You, need, you fucking need drones, actually. Okay. So go just go attack now. Uh, go 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 get active essentially make I would say what you need to do right now fix your fucking economy while attacking and you need to get like a queen spreading your creep somewhere because your creep is not giving you any alerts to anything happening because it's like nowhere right. you can just take it yeah take yeah. that queen off and just go start making creep timbers with it and then replace it with a new one okay you should also ideally be attacking newest spaces but it's okay just attack the space you're already here like, there's probably a base in bottom left or a top middle. Go check top, top middle with, like, one Hydra or something. Just to make sure and see if he has it. If he does, kill it next. Uh, you're... Okay, he doesn't have it, he so have yeah, get back up then. Just back up, back up. Rotate around the bottom of the map now. There is no sense in attacking his natural right now because it's e it's harder to attack that right now. It's easy for him to defend because his choke points all over it. He's got buildings all over it. But if you hit the fucking bottom of the map, way easier for you to attack that. You need to kill economy because he's already mined out in those bases that they're in top left. So if you take his money away, he loses anyways. Fix your drones. Make Also, remake that base that died in middle right. You have the lurker selected. There you go. Go, go, go. There could be a base in bottom. There has to be a base in bottom left if, it's, if this guy still wants to have a chance here. Spread your creep too while you're waiting. But don't. Like, try to do it fast. So you're done already. Just go back to your army now because you're already engaging. Okay. Now you killed this base. And now this guy's fucking dead because he has no money. His middle left base is barely uh, mining anything. It's like half mining right now. You can tell because of the timer of the game. It's been uh, That base has been active for like 13 minutes, which means it's almost mined out. And uh, you have a massive advantage now if you just take a second, back up, remake your lurkers that died, and uh, make sure your drone count. What's your drone count? Always check that drone count. Make sure you're not fucking yourself. You've, okay, you need more drones. So uh, I would say... Uh, Wait, I... Okay, my supply is actually pretty capped out, it seems. I can't even make any more lurkers. Yeah, you probably have a bunch of units. I don't know what's in top middle either for you, but it's just take the fight. Uh, and uh, with things that, like, you're going to probably, this could be a messy fight for you because it's a lot of AoE. But he doesn't have anything. Okay. Okay, and remake drones. You're still not going to even have enough if you remake all drones right now. How many drones do you have now? You have 80. 80, 80 is respectable. Uh, transfer drones and put them in like middle right or something. And then go check the base for him that's right under the main. The one you initially killed the first time. And that's the next point you should attack again. And if it's, there's no base there, you should once again bounce down to bottom left. And then work your way up his bases. No, 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 no. Go, go uh, up, up, up. First? Go, go oh, up, okay. go up, go up. No, I'm talking about the, oh, the, you're just, yeah, you're yeah, just the fourth base. Starving him. Exactly. Like, there's no point in attacking the heart of his base when these bases on the outside could exist. And look how easy this is to kill. This base is like a pushover base. And that you just killed it again? This guy is so fucking dead again. Like, you just put him in such more pressure. Now, don't go into his natural. Back up. Go down to the bottom left. Because if you go bottom left and he's now retaking that base again, every time you do this, you starve him more. And if you don't... Like, the point I'm trying to make here is, is if you don't waste a lot of time... And go okay. back to your base and stuff. You can just deny that base you just denied, and then go bottom left entirely, re-deny those bases, and then work your way up through his third and his natural and stuff like that. Because there's really not enough time for him to have expanded again. But if you wait okay. for like over a minute before you actually check this stuff, then he could have re-expanded because it's only a minute to expand essentially. So like right now, you're gonna have to reset again because you're taking a lot of time. Right. So you'll have to check both again, which is fine. Your starving is still good. Yeah, I would say you need to defend because you have the advantage, so you should be not defending. If you're not, if you're not going to be, a, if you're not going to keep him on defense by being assertive with your attacks, you should actually just be defending. If you attack, it's going to just. I, know, I think I think I horribly split up my arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually. It's okay. It, like you just took a lot of time. You let him get uh, so the. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Sorry, it's sorry. Okay. I think my hotkey thing was screwed up. Okay. You're all good. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. The next game, I promise, will be better. It's okay? all good. I no worries, I, just, man. I think I just needed a wake-up slap. That's what it was. This guy clearly... I don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, like, not indicative of a normal game, which is kind of awkward as well. <laughs> You're okay. But I think I, regardless, did learn something, oh, yeah. which is that I think one of my biggest issues which is completely opposite of what you've been saying, even though my macro and everything's been terrible, it is the n complete non-committal, non-head-on style, and that's the opposite of what I've been doing. You should definitely be more assertive about time when you're maxed out. Okay. I mean, this game is actually o over. It's 100% over, yeah. Like, yeah, like so. you, you could make 500 mistakes and still win this game at this point. Yeah, yeah. okay. But the, okay, so the, the point I'm trying to make is, with all of it, is if you have advantage, you shouldn't give your opponent the ability... Like, the right. the chance that your opponent has to win the game if, in, in a base trade when you have the advantage is higher than right. if you just defend and then re-push him again. Because there's, okay. there's nothing about his army that would ever make sense that he beats yours. Because disruptors actually don't really work against hive tech lurkers. They do work against layer tech lurkers, but hive tech can easily avoid disruptor shots. And not only that, he doesn't have enough of them either. And then yeah. his army as well is only like half the size of yours every fight overall. Like your army will never lose to his. So the fact that you guys just traded one base for one base, and it, he actually got a better trade there for just the moment because he killed a new base and you killed an old base. But, I mean, you have more units, so you're going to kill more bases it. faster. Okay. okay. You know what? Can we, can we, can we, do, the, can we do a little do-over? Can we... Um... Yeah, I mean, Can we just end this game? Okay. Uh, no, I don't. Feel like, you're killing him. I mean, if you, I guess. Oh, I know. It's, I mean, it's a, it's an unranked game. It's like at this point, I there feel is like MMR though. The coaching and, lesson and is uh, your MMR is going to go oh, down okay. if you leave. Oh really? Yeah. Because okay. like it, unranked has its own. I was about because I was going to say like he's going to leave in the next like ten seconds. <laughs> like you've already won. Uh, but yeah, like uh, also another thing to say is it definitely is more worth your time too to. Uh, uh, be playing people who are going to push you harder, right? So, like, if someone like that, if you're making, like, fucking 50 mistakes and you're still winning games, that's not good for you because it means you're going to play lazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't re I didn't realize that that was the case. I, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to, yeah. So, actually, that makes sense. So, so that, sorry, that was an overall absolutely terrible game. I think, I, I don't even know where I was coming from there, but I, I still learned a lot of things, but I feel like, I feel like um, if you were to reanalyze that game, I feel like a lot of it is not at all indicative of how I'm usually much faster. <laughs> You're okay. It's I'm okay. usually paying attention to more it's things. Okay. I, if you want and my, my queens are usually not mismanaged. If you want one, one of my biggest pieces of advice for live coaching, yeah. it would be yeah. Uh, for you, for you to focus, try to talk as little as possible and try to listen. Okay. And like, like if, if, if you're busy, you're busy. It's okay. I'll retail. I, I'm not going to take offense to it and be like, this guy's not fucking listening to me. Like I'll, cause I know you're busy, right? You're, you're, you're like, bro, I'm fucking dealing with shit. I totally get it. And then I, but the thing is I will retell you because you will forget most of like people don't just queue up all these things that the people, like if someone's giving you commands and you're busy and you're like, okay, maybe later. Not right now. I got to do this first because this is like crunch time here. You're right. So like, don't like. It's totally fine if I tell you the same thing five times or something like that. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay. and, but if you if if you will then tell me something else about like man, it's it's fucking rough out there today. I, there's so this okay, one thing. You're happened, right. You're right. You're just gonna make yeah, it even harder because you're gonna fall further behind. Okay, that's a good point. I think, okay, so I'll focus on just doing what I'm doing and let <laughs> yeah. you see. I, I was trying too much to explain. Exactly. To explain yeah, I, process, I know. Yeah. I think you'll just, you'll just see it. Okay. I totally know what's going on. I think the other part is that I think that the, the scouting part, I think I will just prepare myself to pay a lot of attention to what you're saying. I think I was trying to, I was, I was trying to do too much in that moment and I should have just been focusing on what you're saying. I think I'm going to blame that to the 6 a.m. last night but um okay makes sense vibe what would you, what do you think should we just jump into a new game i feel like that was just yeah, ridiculous yeah it's fine there there i mean there was definitely some parts about that game that were okay and there was some parts about the game that were definitely something we could talk about but it's your macro is slipping a lot here and there it's okay uh okay let's um yeah i feel like i just need to slap myself or something you're, all, okay. you're all good dude Okay, here we go. Okay. All right, good. At least we're getting another Protoss, not a Zerg. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, maybe I should have some coffee. <coughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Make that droney boy. I hope this guy goes for Colossus, but whatever. We'll see. Yes, we'll focus on our priorities. Yeah, grab that overlord, send him up. Fix your mineral line. Oh, so I, I should make a... I, I should make overlord a... now. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. That is actually the opposite of what I've been doing. Yeah, if 14 drone into an overlord then is bad because you larva cap for a fucking, like, two seconds or one second. Okay. Oh, yeah. And that, that's true. You don't have any drone friend. splitting stuff yet. 5 SD, 5 SD. I should probably... Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. No, you're all, you're all good. Uh, uh, yeah, you're totally fine. Just, yeah, uh, if, if in this point in the game, just definitely, uh, stick your, uh, drones on the close patches if you can. It's the only thing you really can do right now. It definitely helps. Okay, so oh, just go, go to your yeah, third. So I'm, not, I'm not used to this timing. Yeah, so he's going to still block you. Then. There's a technique. All right, just kidding. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. I can show you that what I was going to talk about after this game if you want. Okay. Because it's kind of hard to yeah, explain sure. in, like, one second. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Okay, so keep making drones. Don't stop. Don't get distracted. So he's cannon rushing Bloody in. hell. It's okay. Should I do that? Should I go for it or should I do the extra uh, stuff? Actually, he's not even... What is he... Try try a Ravager defense this game because this is a pretty fail cannon rush. He's not even cannon rushing a base that matters. Watch your overlord though. Don't let it die. It's just sitting above the cannons. So what you're going to do this game is you're going to never take... To stay on one gas for now. Actually, wait. No, he's got a gateway. So it's okay. It's okay. Just keep it. Keep your second gas. Uh, keep making drones for now. Keep making drones. Don't Don't panic. This is not a big deal. Okay, it's not a big deal. And then what we're going to be abusing here is Ravagers being able to outrange a cannon with cursive violing the edge of a cannon. That's the whole concept. Sure. So don't run in and auto attack cannons. Take your Roach Warren immediately right be? now. Roach Warren right now. Take your Queen. Okay. Both Queens at both hatches. When as soon as the natural is going to be finished now, so take your Queen. And then okay. make uh, up 16 drones only in the main and stop using the main. So if, you have, if that's a drone, no more drones. Okay, now let Larva okay. sit for a sec on the main. Make overlords, okay. make an overlord at the natural, it's okay. Make, actually make one drone and make an overlord and rally the eggs away from the cannon. You're probably gonna have to expand again. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, so now, honestly, make roaches out of your main as soon as you can. And take, okay. take those two drones off of gas now too, to be honest, on the bottom. Cause this guy's, this guy's actually cannon rushing too much. This is if you have a lot of gas, it's gonna fuck you over. Uh, I'll, we can that's Should definitely I make roaches here as well. Uh, no, make it in your main. Make it make roaches I did. in your main. I did. Okay, now make two overlords at your natural again, because you're gonna lose supply anyways, and the hatchery dies. Okay, just just let that base die. It's gonna die. Now make a drone again, though. Your drone fucking died. So because you, you want to take another you're hatchery. Trying to get me to expand. Yeah, oh, I God, want you God. to expand. Yeah, I mean, honestly, make a second drone if you can, if you have time, at that base and get it away from the cannons. Okay, now no more. Let that base die. So you'll have enough supply to work with everything here, and then you can go take a base up right above north of your natural, like your supposed fourth, and then just start cr cannoning. Cr okay, that was okay. You only got shot once, and that was you're hitting both cannons, so that's good. Take your other base, like right, of, yeah, in front of the mineral wall or something. No, uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just take two bases. This is all I want you to do, and then corrosive bile again. That shit's up already. Don't let the cannons regen. Should I be droning yeah. or should I be... Uh... You, uh, you should be wor worrying about taking hatcheries first and then drone again, sure. And then take your riches down and go kill the other cannon rush. You can honestly just take your natural. Bring that drone back and take your natural. It's fine. Or just take that base. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to give you mixed commands here, but fuck. Okay. I get it, I get it. I think I am starting to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... You know what actually I'm realizing? I'm, I'm get sorry, out of the I got distracted because I was actually disappointed because... Every single game I've been playing has been completely different for the games that we were seeing right now. Uh -huh. And I was really hoping to see a standard game because that's where I'm having the issues. You're explaining and this stuff. You're missing the yeah. cannons, dude. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. 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 So all you want to do, no, don't, do not auto attack them fucking ever. Make sure you don't miss. Okay, just take that drone and take the base north right now. Just You need to get that hatchery down fucking right now. You're wasting. Okay, just you can take that. 
It, what the okay, can you miss the cannons again? Make sure you hit the cannons. I'm, I'm just gonna throw what out. What the hell? So you're okay. you're casting it way too early. Right now you are falling. This guy's one basing you, right? It's not that bad, but you're you are fault, wasting way too much time. We should definitely talk about this game when it's over. Um, okay. You missed the cannons again. Stop trying to. Okay, just kidding. You you actually hit them. I'm surprised. I. Uh, yeah. I... It's uh, uh, Okay. Uh. So that's dealt with. Now take your roaches, and move them across the map and go start pressuring his base. This is gonna be distraction. He's probably gonna make a Stargate behind this and right now you need to be droning, okay? I 100% wanna talk about this game after though because there's like a thousand things I wanna say but I have not enough time to okay. say it. Okay. So, sorry, I don't wanna sound like I'm stressed out or anything. I'm not. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I'm just trying to explain shit to you and it's impossible to explain it fast enough. Sure. Uh, you can also start spreading creep with that queen too. You have so much energy. Like throw like two tumors out or some shit. So, yeah, make only drones. Only drones. No units. Oh, you can upgrade, yeah. I can, I can you, can, you can make those in Ravagers, it's fine. But only, wubba, wubba, dub, only dub. drones. Keep making drones. Keep making, like, hill buildings. Keep injecting your bases. Drones only. Cause, and then make overlords too, because you're going to spy block here. Okay, so we knew he had Stargate. So now get out of there. And now, you, the fact that you're making queens already is correct. You keep making queens. Get your creep spread between your bases going faster. And keep injecting and keep making drones. If you can get your... Now, I, what I want you to do... Here's a cool trick, okay? The base in the middle of your bases. Bring one drone there right now. Take a queen and walk it off creep to that same location. Do not build on the exact hatchery location. Build to the left of it a little bit. I'll see how you Here? do it. Yeah, yeah, just to the, the left. Like, that's fine. Right there. That's fine. Now, walk your queen next to it. Cancel the hatchery. Walk your queen right next to it. Right next to it. Right next to it. Get closer. You're not close enough. It might not I mean, work. Really close. Okay, it worked. It worked. Don't worry about it. Now you can take that base. And now you're going to expedite your creep spread a little bit. I should take this base. Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, yeah. Take the base. Now, look at your uh, main. I see him coming. Yep, yep, yep. Then go defend your main. And also, make more lords because he's fucking destroying your entire farm of overlords. Group your queens up, all of them. Uh, like, literally grab every queen you have and, like, put it in, like, a control group so you can easily control them. And then just make new queens again to inject. Okay. And then keep, in, keep making drones and overlords as you can. Okay, you can transfuse that queen. Good job. Keep spreading your creep during this. Don't stop. Oh, shit. Okay. Because you're still not fully connected, so if he goes up to your top bases, they're still kind of vulnerable. Like spread that upper creep tumor towards the the third in the middle of everything, and like connect the creep as much. Like make it go towards it. Okay, he went up. You want to go down? Like make sure you connect the creep. There you go. Another. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Good shit. Good shit. Good shit. You, you got it. Okay, and now make a layer, and then transfer drones around. Fix your economy. Make drones. This guy can do nothing to you right now, because he's making just voids. So if you make queens and drones, he can't do shit to you. Better creep, easier defense, more queens, avoids do nothing. Keep making drones. Transfer drones to new bases. You have way too many on your natural. Put them on your third. Or your fourth. The, the, the one you built fourth. Like it's like the middle base. Has a little zero. Keep making drones. Look at also take a second to like check top right. How many drones you got? Make more. Any four. Literally make them up to like eighty five, and then make double Evo right now and a hydrogen as your layer finishes. Notice how greedy you're being, and this guy can't punish you. It's fucking crazy. Get roach speed as well in case this guy starts making adepts or ground units with it, just in case you need to use them. Make drones again and overlords. Saturate your gases and stuff on every base and your mineral lines and check them all again. Take a new base as well. You're going to be oversaturated here. So expand. There you go. Keep spreading creep. Check your top right. Make like probably like, I would assume probably like 10 more drones. 
Yep. I think I'm at 83. Okay, now. you're that's that's fine. That's good enough. Now start making hydras, and group your queens up and defend those voids. Try not to let that base die. The better creep you have, the easier this shit is to see coming before it, it becomes a problem like it is right now. Rebuild that base as soon as it dies. Re immediate rebuild it. Okay, and then keep starting creep. And now I want you to make, uh, I, I don't know what's in middle left, but make a zergling and then have it scout the bases on the map, just like one link. You don't need to make a lot, or an overseer with the changeling does the same thing. Uh, you can also make an overseer and changeling it. You just want to scout and see where his bases are located and how greedy he's being. Get weapons and armor for range weapons and armor on Evos. Start an infestation pit. Because you want to still go lurkers, right? Eventually. Uh, and then fix your gases at your fourth. Your third, the base it's building, essentially. Fix all your economy. Where is every base looking good? What about top top right? Is that base looking good? It's uh, looking fucked up on the gas. Heavily. Now it's fucked up on the middle line. Now group up your army. Go defend that. And keep making hydras. Because, again, you're making hydras nothing but hydras because you're maxed out on drones. See, more creep means you could defend this, too. Rebuild that base immediately. So this guy's doing a bit of damage to you that he shouldn't be doing to you if your creep sword is better. That's why creep is so important. Why is my, I can't my ha Oh, I don't have minerals for this. That's why. Yeah, I should just try and build it again. You're all good. Fix that creep. Your creep needs to definitely be better. So okay. uh, I'll, I'll even uh, I'll keep being more persistent about saying it too. But yeah, creep's right again oh, right thank now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then get some creep going on the bottom left side. Like bring those queens down and yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And check the drone count, top right. Also make a hive. When you can. Hive when you can. Good job. Check, uh, now make a lurker den, because you started the hive. You want to be able to pair this with lurkers. Check drone count, top right. What, what are you at? 82? Okay, maybe make like like five more, just because you're spinning more on more buildings here and there. I just did, I just okay, did, good yeah. shit. Now make hydras again. Get hydra upgrades. You don't have the other upgrade yet, like speed or something. Okay, you already you almost got it. So group up your army and get ready to defend this. You will crush him if you take a fight with him right now. You should not be afraid. Go put like push your creep forward. Make him get the fuck back while you push your creep forward. And because right now you should be actually getting ready to posture to take a fight on his base. Like you are scaling faster than he is with supply. Fight this. Kill this. Don't run around too much. You waste time. Like you are beating his ass. And this is what should be happening right now because you had an economy lead. I, you already know you're winning if you have an economy lead because he can't keep up with you. It's impossible to make units without anything. Spread creep. Like, set up your army to go top middle and spread creep. I would say top uh, top middle is most likely where he is because, uh, yeah, okay, no base on the middle left. So don't go natural. Do not go natural. Back up, back, 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 back. Kill new expansions okay. always first. Oh, so I should go around? Yes. Go le go right up and then left. Like a... Yeah, exactly. Like a reverse C. And then... There you go. Top middle's got a base. So now you're going to kill a new base and you're starving him. Now push the third after this base dies. Fuck your queens. Who cares? Let them auto attack and distract. It's okay. They're not really useful anyways anymore. Spread creep really fast. Five seconds of creep spread. Go right now. Four. Three. Two. One. Micro your army. Go back to your army. Okay. Make make units while you're doing this. Uh, make your army though. Like inject after it. Like whatever you can do to help your army, make sure you're doing. Like make sure positioning's not shit. Uh, you're fighting in a battery overcharge. It's okay. Just back up. Let it let it be. Back up. Let, that was okay. Fight. You're still winning the game because you have way more economy than he does. Back up. Make hydras. Fix your gases as well. You have some fucked up gases at like your middle base. And also, I don't know if you're mining gas at your bottom base. You're not, yeah, you gotta definitely fix your gas. Keep making units. Keep making hydras. Take your gas in your middle base. Yeah, fix those economy. Right, yeah. Is my middle base here? The yeah, any gas is fine, but yeah, the one that you built with the creep trick, this one is fucked up. Really, you're looking at right now. The mineral okay, line. So can I make some links really quick no. just to All right. just fill up some of my supply? Okay, okay. sure. Yeah, that's fine. That's you're like out of gas. I mean, right now you should have only hydras because you're fighting a sky toss army, but you're only not able to afford it because your gas is still fucked. And there's one oh, that's not even okay. taken. And just make like three drones and put them on it really fast, like you are good. 
and then do not fight. Do not fight. You don't have your whole army yet. You're like still so much shit in production. Spread creep and inject like you are. Is this live? Yeah, this is live. This is live coaching, guys. Uh, I'm Discord viewing a, a coaching game. Your gas and or your middle base still is a little fucked up. You have a missing drone on one of them. There you go. Good job. Make hydras. Max out. Inject really quick. Do it like I do this. This time, do a big one. You have a second here. Yeah, perfect. I'm I'm loving the rapid fires. You're really, really, really turning me on right now. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> now make fucking uh take a ling and go check bottom left also get ling speed back 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 don't loot don't waste them go check all of bottom left right now really fast because you have no idea for the longest time if he's got expansions down there so you need to go confirm if this is a good idea to, to stay on the top because he's a bit more fortified now like you never want to fight someone when they're already prepared for it as much as possible you want to fight where they're not prepared that's the best way to take efficient fights fix your economy like your main base is oversaturated Send some of those drones off to a new base. And uh, you're probably going to, honestly, when this fight's over, uh, go upgrades first really quick. Upgrades. I'll fuck what I was about to say. It's fine. What should I do? Okay, so uh, uh, ling, uh, adrenal glands for lings. Okay, you got okay, it. Now, hydra good, uh, ling good, lurker good. Did you get all the lurker upgrades already? Lurker upgrades right now. Okay. Don't use them yet? Okay, go push. There's no base you see yet. So take your army, not lings though, and go push the middle. Push the middle base. Probably go up and around though. Don't walk through the middle line choke point. That's a fucking terrible fight for you because it's so tight. Okay. Uh, yep. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to remax hydras immediately. You can take the fight with him now. Honestly, he's in the open. The more open he is, the better it is. But, oh, I see. Yeah, you just don't. I see, want, I'm just. You don't want to. So I can attack his army. Yeah. Like if I'm in you're, there, well, you're in the this open, is what's okay. gonna like back up. Let me just tell you what's gonna happen really fast. Let's explain this real fast. You're gonna lose this fight, 100. percent Okay. But you're going okay. to whittle him down, and you're gonna kill him with your remax. So it's all about okay. a fast fucking remax, and try to take a good concave. So this time, I would say you can actually, if you want to, go poke his natural, just because he reset again Wait, in the fucking choke point. One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go down and around and into his natural. Correct. Because you want to drag him into a more open area. You do not want to fight in a, in a point where only three Hydras at a time can like stack in there. Which is an awful fight for you. Okay, uh, make more drones. Because your gas is a little too high. Is this guy lagging out? Stop. Yeah, also, do you have uh, all your... Uh, something in chat said something. Do you have all your hatcheries hockeyed right now? I think you have a lot of hatcheries unhockeyed. I'll check. Because right now it just has Thank four. You, and you have uh, seven hatches. Oh, that could be... Okay, maybe that's why I feel like I'm always running out of alarm. Yeah, I should have honestly noticed that as well. Good job, uh, Ramius. Thank you! Okay, I'm actually really... Even though the beginning I was very disappointed he cannon rushed me, I'm glad that this is what's happening because this yep. is the exact kind of army that I just don't yeah. know what the heck to do. Go with. up, go up. Group up. Like, try not to go through the choke point where your hydras are really fast. And then group them up. Okay, kill this base because it's a new base. Now get ready to fight him. He's going to come from top right. So concave okay. right now. You know where he is. So make a concave and get ready to fight top right. He's he's going to attack you. Like, this is going to happen. And if he doesn't, go to his natural. He, he Okay, he's counterattacking. Go to his natural. You're already committed. Go to his natural. It's fine. He'll come back. Or it'll if, if it's a base trade, you'll win because you have way more bases. In this particular can situation, make, yeah, you can make sports. That's fine. That's And make sure you make drones again. Like, make drones for your bottom middle base for the mineral line, because you're actually getting kind of shitty on minerals here. Yeah, just run over his base. Fuck it. You're actually doing... You're so far ahead right now if you run over his base. Okay. Uh, let your... Like, okay, so he's here. Just kind of let your hydras do their thing now. Remax. No, okay. no more micro here. Let it... Like, just whittle him down and remax. Because if you don't mic make hydras right now... If you spend... Like, so inject as well. You need to have larva for this. Because if you do spend too much time fucking around with that, he will kill you. Take some drones off gas and put them back on minerals. You have way too much. Like, now you're lopsided with minerals heavy. So, even, like, other bases, too. Maybe, like, one or two more bases. Take drones off gas and put them back on minerals. Also, you have six, eight idle drones, seven idle drones. Put those somewhere else. You can control F1 and grab all of them as well. Oh, cool. Thanks. I didn't know that. Okay. And then group up your units. Try to fight with the spores. Do not go forward. 
Unless the, if the voids overcommit, yeah, it's fine. But it's like opportunity. But yeah, try to fight with spores with your maxed army. Like slightly. Make right. make hydras during the fight whenever you can. This fight's not going bad for you, so far. Uh, yeah, just keep making hydras. I, oh, I see. I'm like I can't. I can't have no minerals. It's okay. Yeah, just keep keep trying every time you can. Because this fight's gonna be kind of close. And the more hydras you have backing you up, the more you'll overpower them over time. Okay. So you just got opportunity here because you backed off because okay. you lost the fight. Go check new bases. Top top middle is a good location. 12 o'clock. Not the uh, not the middle one, but like the actual 12 o'clock edge of the map one. If that makes sense. Like so avoid him. Yeah, yeah. You oh, would uh, you would avoid and then kill the Nexus and then get the fuck out of there essentially is what's happening if you do that. Or okay. the left bases and the bottom left bases. Making sure you starve him, again, is the goal. So if you kill that okay. Nexus, do it quickly and get the fuck out. Do not wait a, a lot of time. Do not kill probes. Just get the fuck out when the Nexus dies. Leave now. Leave quickly. If you just don't, even, don't even stutter. Just run. Don't even. Oh, okay. Like, run to the creep. Okay, you're losing a lot here. So you could have ran top right to your creep and evacuated a oh, lot quicker. Oh, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now you're going to prompt a new attack again. But you starved him a lot more again. So... And your, your gas is still too high. You need to take more there. more dudes off of gas and fix more economy. Like your base okay. you're looking at right now has way too much mineral uh, oversaturation. Like I, it's, I can't take this fight, right? You cannot. You're going to lose the game now fight. if you take this fight. You're, yeah, you got to back up. So the reason why you're losing the game right now is because you haven't been managing your economy much. Oh, uh, yeah. And okay. your, your creep spread also could be better, too. But, uh, 38 months so I actually stock. have no minerals to do anything right now. Exactly. My army. Yeah, no, it's because you, you, what, earlier when I told you to take gas, you took a, like a fuckload of gas. And then okay. uh, when I told you to take off gas, you took one base off. And then uh, so it was actually, just a gas surplus still. Is, right now you have like lopsided mining going on. You have way too much gas mining. So I, I think so. I, I So this game actually was my advantage. I, I think I'm losing this game now, right? I think it, uh, it's, it's not over yet, but right? you're definitely behind. Okay. You're, you're definitely behind. Okay. I would say the best thing you could do while he's fucking around is you need to re-expand in bottom middle. Take new bases again or take top right if he leaves. And go move your army to bottom left and, again, kill his ar kill his new expansion if it exists. And always have the intention to get the fuck out of there. So, like, the base under his natural, essentially, is where you could go as well. Or you could base. go... Oh, okay. Yeah, you could go up or down, either way. But kill... Should I, be engaging? I should not be engaging this If one you fight that, action. you're dead. You're too far behind now to fight that because you don't have a remax. You don't even have an initial max, so you're having a hard time here. Okay, so just try to, uh, yeah, try to keep making units and make sure they're not rallied into death. Essentially, you can see he's coming north, right? Go wide right, go right. Okay, he's going right, so you're fucked. Like you can't really go left either because there's no evacuation here for you. You can try okay. to get out of there. They're gonna take some damage <laughs> as you cross, though. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, you mitigated as much as possible. You actually, uh, you prevented as much from dying as you could and that one time. Uh, and then, I mean, uh, he's pushing now towards the heart of your base, so I would say this is probably going to be the point where you got to take the fight. If you don't take this fight, you're just going to die. And you're probably, you have, like, this is a low chance you win here, but if he does that and he just runs away, don't chase. Go down and left now. Go go immediately, like, down, like, uh, uh, towards, like, your 7 o'clock down the ramp from that base, go up towards his two bases on the side you don't see yet, and make sure he doesn't own them. Starve him while you fix your economy. Grab all those long-distance drones and send them to the south and mine minerals with them. You have so many long-distance drones. Even, like, more down at the base below that. Like, so many of them at that base. Like, even more than that. They're, like, going towards your natural as well. Check the one base above you. You have more long-distance drones. Doesn't exist? Okay, you're actually in a decent spot. Like, it's it's winnable still because this guy is not expanding as much as he should. So... I do have the... I can do Vipers if that's okay, but if you think it's not needed... I would say like, if you're going to make I, any Spellcaster, you should make Infester and Microbial Shroud your Hydras because he's, like, all air. Okay. And then it only makes sense as well because you have a fuckload of gas. Oh, shit, I've actually never used Microbial Shroud. It's okay. The, the hockey for it's C by default, I think. You could check it, but yeah. Literally, it's a humongous cloud. You just cast it once on your hydras. Okay. 
and then you can cast it on an area like cast it like so the concave of your hydra the width of it would probably be two microbial shrouds okay and then uh so he's guaranteed taking top middle again and you can't stop it this time because he's turtling up there so what you could okay. do indirectly is creep spread bottom left towards his expansions over there and indirectly fuck him that way so you really need to get back on that creep spread now that the game is restabilizing okay so I actually watch, don't even. I think I'm off watch top, my bottom left. Careful, what's happening there? So just make like one queen for Crusader. Do not make a lot. Just one. Okay. Also get rid. Of, like uh, he's now pushing bottom left. So you can move. Don't oh, don't yeah, attack yeah. that. Do not attack. Go up 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 up. Go base for base. Newest base. Go kill the twelve o'clock base. You keep killing. Deny it again. And make re-expand the top right and make a new set of drones that just died. Like, base for base this motherfucker, and make it to where he starves and not you. Okay. So transfer drones away if he keeps going. Okay, okay, now go down a base and kill the next one if he doesn't come back. You have about five seconds to react to this. Okay, he, he's back, he's back, back up, back up, back up, back Get out of the cannons and stuff. Get back to your creep a little bit so you have more mobility here. Now, whenever you're ready... When you feel like you have a good concave, you can take a fight and you can microbial shot yourself. Okay, don't chase though. I would not recommend chasing because you're lowering, you're getting low again on uh, overall supply. And you also have 13 idle drones. So send them to like the new base you just built and try to re-expand again. Try to keep not wasting too much time on your economy. But I should have actually, I, I overdid that. Yeah, just send like four down and you're fine. Okay, watch. He's pushing you again. Watch your army. Shroud again. Okay, he's got a lot of zealots now. So this would be when you also probably want to have lurkers. But don't worry about it yet because it's kind of too late. You might make sure you cast it again if it fades. Okay, he's, he's kind of backing up again. So what you want to do now, I would say, is get like five lurkers. You're pretty fucking broke right now. So get like five lurkers. And then that's good. And now go back to making Hydras. You're winning the game through economy right now. You need to do it again, though. Go check bottom left area. Like, left side of the map. Like, just like you need to expand, so does he. So if you avoid and kill expansions, you starve, you win. This is how you go bottom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is how you win games like this. You don't just always go for the army. Be careful how you move, though. If you move to the middle like that, you have a higher chance to get fucked. Because if you get caught once, you lose the game. So this is really risky how you're moving here. Oh, okay, you should have moved on your creep down left and then went up that way. It would have give you a lot you were more cover. You feel risky, man. I have so much more oh, it's super risky. With you here. <laughs> kill the nexus okay, and get the fuck out. Kill nexus and get out. Do like and, uh, kill the next nexus and get out as well. Go go left. The probe showed you where he is. Okay, so just run. He's too close. Just run. Run. Do not fight that. Just go straight down and do not even kill the nexus. Just run. Kill the nexus. Don't kill it. You could have if it was faster, but you don't have enough time. Just get out of there. If he chases you like this, you do not want to fight with Hydras without Lurker, without Shroud. That makes no sense. Because you're just going to lose all your Hydras then. But you just Where starved him lurkers? again. So, so relocate your Lurkers and your Shroud to bottom left now. With your army. And now you can... And then this is when you want... Like, right? You want Creep here too, right? Like I was talking about earlier. If you had Creep, you probably you, you could have probably killed both Not with sure more mobility. Kill, oh, okay, okay. So you didn't have Creep, so your Hydras are slower and shit. It makes it easier for him to catch you. Uh, now, you know he has the base in bottom left. Now here's what you do. This is a cool trick. Uh -huh. Make like three more lurkers and make hydras. Make like three more. Now, now group your army. Stop, stop running around. Stop for a second. Take like just two lurkers, just two, and then make them in their own group. Take them out of the fucking group. And now, move your army back to top middle. Dis like I want you to distract him and move Where to top. Where should my lurkers go? St just okay. So, all army except for those two lurkers goes top middle. Defend this. The two lurkers you just okay. took out of your army. One in each mineral line that's available to him right now. Just one in each mineral line. Okay, worry about the fight right now really fast. Microbial shot, bury your lurkers. This is stressful. It's okay. that's how it goes. It's a ladder. Oh shit, I'm fungling okay. my thing. Okay, so that's just, okay. Just, just chill for a sec. Burrow, your, burrow one lurker per mineral line. Just one per mineral line. Watch it for a sec. Is you ready? Okay, one of them is running into a cannon, so don't burrow in the cannon. Burrow up, up, up. Go up. Go away from it. Perfect. Burrow. Now, he's going to come down, so now go kill his bases up. You are killing probes right now, and now you, now you all, like, what I'm telling you to do is I'm telling you to pull him one way and fuck him another way, and then you pull him another way and you fuck him again on the other side. You literally just, like, hit him in the fucking ribs on the sides over and over and over. <laughs> Kill the Nexus and get the fuck out of here. He doesn't have it. He's broke. You are winning the game now. 
So kill Should this. I do not kill push. The lower one? Yeah, yeah. You can push the lower one, but do not push his base. The fact that you have creep to evacuate is good. Because now you can see on the mini-map he's coming up again. So kill the Nexus and get out. And go back to a defensively postured location on creep. Okay, you won. So... Holy shit. It's... You're a, oh my god, you're pull, dude. You're pulling him apart. Like, you are so fucking dead, dude. No, I'm, no. You don't understand. I am normally dead like half an hour ago. <laughs> oh my. I mean, I understand like to your standards that was probably there's so much. But oh my god. I cannot believe... That I just won that game. Yeah, it's well, you, you. The way you won that game is through economy, not through anything else. That this is what B to GM is supposed to teach you from bronze to plat, which is like understanding how to make a good economy, and then diamond plus is understanding how to break your opponent's economy. So what you just did right there is a push and pull strategy where you go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And you literally just fucking make and because here's here's what you here's what your goal is, okay? This will probably make it make sense. Your goal is to make him take a disadvantageous fight. And it, what a disadvantageous fight means is he's fighting in your territory, not his own. Like he's not fighting with batteries with good choke points. He's fighting with wide open areas that support you because you're hydras. And he's fighting on creep and with and you even had spores at one point. And he's going into choke points where you're not you're not sitting at choke points yourself. You're allowing him to come into them, and then he's getting bottlenecked into like your shrouds and your fungals if you want to use them, your hydra line, your lurker line, which is cleaving harder into choke points. You make him come to you like that by starving him to make him feel like he has no choice but to attack you. Because if he doesn't, he's just getting out mined anyways. And this is a pacing game. This is this is where pacing comes into StarCraft with whoever has more accessible like actions per minute and who can play the game faster can create this problem for their opponent i see okay so yeah so what you're saying is so the number one goal was to starve him by doing this push and pull we kind of kept doing a two prong yep. here or, or here there here there we pretty much never in, tried to engage his army nope ever it makes no sense to engage his army unless you have the advantage wait so actually i'm, I'm trying to think like, wow. the, think, think about that. I'll give you an analogy that would probably make sense. Imagine that you're like 150 pounds. You're like a, you're like a, like a medium sized guy and you're fighting a guy in like a boxing ring. Who's like twice your weight. He's like 300 pounds. He's a fucking right. beast. And it's like, where, what's your oh, advantage in that fight? Yeah. It's like endurance and probably mobility. Yeah. Oh, and you want to bait him to chase you and he gets tired. Me. And once he gets tired, then it's your advantage. But if you just go in there fucking like punch in his stomach and he just hits you in the head once and you get knocked out. Like the fight's fucking over, and that's what you're doing. You're using a mobility army, which is exactly that, and you're fighting a power army, which is what he's doing. He's slow as fuck, but super powerful. You're really fast, but you're kind of weak. So if you break him down, and you weaken his overall endurance in the game, which is you weaken his economy, so he has no way to continue the game, you then break him down through remaxes. I see, because I guess. Yeah, I would normally be dead because I'd have t taken some engagement at some point. But I guess he, no matter what he did, when he, whenever he approached our base, I guess he, because because I'm trying to think, when he came down straight <coughs> into the middle, right in front of our base, pretty much with all of his sky toss, we actually didn't die. And I guess that's because we were on creep, we had spores, and enough to that he didn't want to overcommit. Is that yeah? That's why we didn't yeah, die. He, then. he did. He didn't take fights with you because he was taking bad fights. He was taking okay. a fight that he was intimidated by. So he goes, well, this is not that efficient. And he cares about efficiency because he also doesn't have a lot of economy. So, okay, I can't wait till we go through this because I think what the reason I probably would have died is the very first engagement with his sky toss in the middle, even if it was close to my base, I probably would have just taken it out of fear. <laughs> that if I don't attack now, I'm going to get killed and lose. But I guess we just said, hey, just get away. Yeah. Just, and let's just stay alive. That's your, and and, no and that's what your it. power is, too. Because think about it for a second. Your Hydra army is way fucking faster mobility-wise than his carrier army. You can easily disengage. So there's no reason why you... Like, you're the one who actually gets to pick where the fight happens. Like, the mobility yeah. player always should be the one who gets to pick. The only way a power player gets to pick is if he's actually somehow bullied you into a corner... And you're just dead. And you're like, well, fuck. Okay, well, I, I have nothing now. I can't... If I lose this last base, I'm just out of the game anyways. So I have to fight now. That's the only way you have to fight. Otherwise, if you if you lose... If you're like, oh, he's killing one of my bases on the south side. How about I just go base for base and kill one of his bases on the north side? And if I'm mobility and he's power, 
Yeah, he kills that base really fast. But a base, it doesn't matter about the fact that a power army can kill a base really fast when you're 200 supply on either side. A 200 supply mobility army can also kill a base really fast because buildings don't scale in HP. So they have limitations about how long they last anyways. And if you're a mobility player base trading a power player, you actually get to base 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by the time you get to just base 2, 3. Because you're so much faster getting around the base. So base trade is actually in your advantage in that situation. Got it. Wow, my mind is completely blown. So I, I guess I was feeling bad he he, uh, he he cannon rushed me, but it seems like we got a two for two for the yeah, price of one bonus game because now there's two different aspects. But the it seems like even though my macro of course could use improvement, the way that you walked me through the overall engagements throughout is completely different from my panic. And I didn't realize I was I didn't think I was panicking, but actually this whole time, all these years, I've just been panicking. Wow, yeah, you never. You, yeah, you, yeah. No worries. You have to. Uh, like, sorry. And sorry. Like, I know sometimes during the cannon rush, like it might have sound like I was getting stressed out, but I, like, it's. No, you're fine. The, you're fine. I, yeah. No, it's it's like there's like one thing where I, I'm watching you do one move, and I'm like, okay, I could explain this for like ten seconds, and then you do another move, and I'm like, fuck, now I gotta explain that, and I can't even talk about the first one, and then I'm like, yeah. okay, this is like becoming too much, to like, I can, my mouth doesn't move this fast, uh, but yeah, I want to give you some ideas on how to deal with cannon rush better and give you like an understanding of the goal because right now what, sure. we, what we just did as well there was we gave you an understanding of the goal that you have if you're fighting sky toss and you're on hydras which is mobility power like mobility versus power and your mobility because you're faster and you're weaker but you can turn that into your advantage if you know how to use it which is push and pull like left right left right and he's like ah oh, fuck my base on the left is dying ah oh, my base on the right is dying ah oh. and then that remember that thing i said like the biggest turnaround point in this game talking from the like a perspective of what i believe where you won the game really it just didn't happen fully yet was when you sent two lurkers to his bases in the middle, in the middle left because okay. the reason oh, why the re this is the reason why that was so huge he double expanded after you killed his only base that was mining because he was fucking broke and he like he uh you just killed top middle so he's broke and then you did two lurkers in middle left and another one in the other middle left base which okay. ruined his economy again. And then while he came, he was desperate, right? So he sends his whole army down to come defend that. And as he right. comes in to defend that, you end up killing a bunch of probes and you also re-deny top middle again. Like you make sure he's not even mining there either. And that forced okay. him into an all in that. And then if you can successfully force them into an all in, that's when you win the game, because then you're taking all the advantages on creep with good concave, with good location. You're picking where the fight happens and you can look at the terrain and go, okay, well, if he's going to push me from his side of the map, because he's obviously not going to like teleport behind my army, because he's going to have to walk across the map. If he's coming from his side to my side, where is the best place I can sit that gives me good concave and gives him shit concave? And then it also is like with creep and with good, like, good terrain in your advantage. You, so you just pick. And then once okay. it's set up, your fight is now fucking three times stronger than it would have been if you just walked in the middle of nowhere. Like when I remember when I said... Okay, now go left and you can kill the Nexus and now just run. Don't kill the other one. If you would have stood there and fought off creep without Lurker, without Infester, every Hydra dies. And then you have right. nothing to actually support Infester Lurker anymore. And you have no, not enough economy to remake that. And then you die. And you're like, well, fuck, now I can't stop his army, essentially, because I just fought him with half my army against his whole army and now I'm dead. Okay. I, still, I, I almost want to give that opponent a kiss, man, because he did the exact long-term build that i just don't i just don't get and i guess this whole time i it's really the my engagements have just been terrible um some other another thing i noticed and maybe we can talk about it as well is i had severely overgassed and no, i for think sure. i don't have a i don't have a concept of i think what's what's appropriate what the yeah i don't i don't think i guess i just don't even know i just i just see a base and i just start throwing you know, whatever gas and mineral just trying to saturate it blindly. Um, so that was an issue. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so basically, I'm going to ask you a couple questions and this will help you understand gas and mineral allocation. Do you know how much resources a lurker costs? Uh, oh, I guess with just the lurker alone, I think it's like a 125, 125 or something. It's 50 minerals and 100 gas. So it's definitely heavy on the gas. Oh, okay. And then, uh, oh, wow. so it's, it's totally fine. If you, if you don't know these, it's totally fine. It's just going to give you an idea about a concept. Do you know how much yeah, resources yeah. a investor costs? 
I don't remember, like 100 something, 100 something it, each. It's 100 and then 150. So 100 mineral, okay. 150 gas. And then do you know how much yeah. minerals a hydro costs? I think it's like 75 gas, 100 minerals. <coughs> it's 50 gas and 100 minerals. So you're close on some of these. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is, is if we understand that if those are the three units you're using in this game, uh, like, and your, your overseer doesn't really count because you're making like literally one or maybe two and you're done. Like you're not actually making mass overseers. Um, but your, I would say your army is probably like 70% Hydra, 20% Lurker, 10% Infester. So okay. we definitely have a large investment on the mineral side here because your Hydras are double the mineral to the gas investment. So that's a huge mineral request. And then even though your gas for, is a bigger request on your Lurkers and your Infestors, you yeah. did need it at one point when you didn't mine enough of it. And now you're also trying to make a gas heavy composition. Because that's when you're going fucking crazy on lurkers, and you're like right. getting ready to start. You're hive teching, and you're getting ready to go into infestors a little bit after that. So you're like starving for gas, right? You're like, okay, I need gas expensive units, and I'm only mining gas with like 10% of my economy right now, or like 15% of my economy. So it's not really adding up because you're missing like you, you were missing at one point like six gas geysers on like five bases, and yeah. then you took all of them at once. You made your initial round of lurker hydra, and then as you lost minerals and i kept telling you this is where you fuck this is a 100 this is where you, it all fell apart every time i told you to expand from that point on and retake bases you kept prioritizing gas first gas first gas first gas right. first so you already had enough gas to support what you were doing at that point in time but you kept losing minerals and turning into more gas after that so you you were already okay. good on gas but you kept dipping deeper and deeper so like your next two bases after that were immediate hatchery gas gas hatchery gas gas and then you saturated the gases and sorry, so at, at what point do you feel I was good on gas? When you took the initial investment of your all the, the gases, at like five bases. When I said, fix the gas here, fix the gas there, right, you were done. Right. But then when I told you to keep expanding and you had to keep sending your drones el elsewhere. You should have just focused on minerals. Yeah, that that's when you should have focused on minerals because your gas and minerals were... Okay. You, can tell, you can tell this if you look at top right a lot as well. You should never, ever be balancing your minerals and gas together with the same number, ever. The only time this ever makes sense is if you're making unit that's 50-50 or gas heavy. That's the only time that makes sense. And it, it, Can you repeat that one more time? The, the only time it makes sense to... The only time it makes sense to let your resources in top right go equal, like 3,000 mineral, 3,000 gas, or okay. go superior gas. It only makes sense if you're making a unit that costs 50-50 or heavy gas. And if you're not making any more investors, and if you're really barely making any more lurker, and you're going mass. If you if you you got to think forward and think about what your composition is going to keep being, and if you're going to keep remaking hydras, definitely look at the top right and go fuck. That's too much gas. I need to rip off a little bit and fix my minerals because we're going to have a problem in the next five minutes if I don't fix that. Yeah, I'm writing this down yeah. as well. No worries. So, um, what uh, I guess, what would be the right way to gauge? You know, like when you're when you when you have two gases on a base that are have three drones on each and then you've got all 16 drones on the minerals that is what kind of ratio <coughs> of minerals to gas is that i i guess it, i guess the, is that a good way of thinking yeah, about a, it, a that... fully a fully saturated base it's 900 about 900 minerals per minute and it's about like 330 gas per minute it's like three to one almost like three to one okay i see so if i if i'm going for something like hydras i want about two to one it, as my mineral to gas ratio i would say that's not bad uh that, that's that's a fine way to look at it uh like that's a that's that i feel like that's a very vague but yet good generalization that's that's a healthy number to have but it's really just about the fact that you need to kind of micromanage like when you when you are in the first three bases or four bases you're always mineral prioritying first because it's how you develop an economy because you're making things that cost pure mineral right like right. drones, queens, overlords, hatcheries, stuff like that. But when you get to the point where you're starting to go late game and it's like, okay, well, I have my hive tech, all my techs out. I have uh, five bases. I have my all my compositions being made. I'm maxed out the first time. You need to start looking at your resources in top right. And you need to start like, so there's two phases of top right looking. The first phase is not supply blocking. And then minorly checking to see your economy to make sure you're not fucking horribly like, wow, I have so much money at 50 supply. Like I'm fucking it up. But uh, it really turns into once you're maxed out, you kind of stop looking at the supply and you start paying more attention to the resources because you need to, you need to think about your comp and think about the balance. And the cool thing about your comp is 
is when you get more advanced at StarCraft, you can actually turn strategy into available resources. Like, you can be like, okay, well, I actually have... Like, the way this game has kind of just developed, I actually have a gas surplus, so I'm actually going to go for a heavier Viper style now. And I'm going to start playing a Viper-centric okay. style now because it supports my existing economy better. It, that's improvisation right there. That That's reactionary play. Or you could be like, you know what I'm going to do? I know I mine minerals faster than gas, and there's still enough available mineral, but I have a fucking lot of gas bank. How about I just do a big Muta switch? Because I have this right. massive gas bank I can take advantage of something like that with. Or right. if, you're, if you're in a style where you're like, okay, I have... 700 gas and 6,000 minerals and I'm maxed out. Maybe I want to start doing some Ling run buys and do a bit more of the aggressive mineral side of things. And st or maybe I want to really hunker down and really slam out a bunch of static D and just take new expansions, but defend them really well. Like you can really base your strategy off of your current economy because not every game is perfect. It depends on how your opponent plays too, right? Like sometimes they are really aggressive or they get really good damage done. Sometimes they do nothing. So you, you need to also kind of think about your existing, the key word there is existing economy as to what you have, and then try to maybe also rotate into that a bit more to synergize with it, uh, with just ideas about, and that's where understanding what units cost comes from. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what would make sense, right? But you can, you can still have the overall idea of going, oh, I'm gonna go Lurker Hydra every game, but adding in a Ling Run by here and there, or adding in a Spore Wall here and there makes sense if you have way too much minerals and not enough gas, but if you've been allocating a lot of gas, it probably makes more sense to like throw in some spellcasters or something like that. So it, yeah, wow. it's 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 just really thinking about. It's like basically playing chess, but you're not thinking about what you're gonna do now. You're thinking about what you're gonna do four turns from now. Because you're you're gonna think like if I do this, he's gonna do that. Like if I make a like think about it like this. If you have a bunch of minerals, but you're maxed out already on Lurker Hydra, and you're like, okay, I have like 7,000 minerals and only 800 gas, but he's like over there, and my creep spread has not been the best, so maybe now what I'll do is I'll really focus on creep spread with Static D pushing my creep spread, and I'll take another, like the last ex expansion or two expansions on my side of the map and really fortify and not break. And what's your opponent going to do as a response to that? He's probably going to start trying to play mobility style of going left, right, left, or trying to like just find a hole in your defense and break you. Right. So if you understand right. that, another way you can deal with that now is be like, well, maybe if I make like changelings out of like five overseers, I can like right. scout a bit more heavy. And now I can upgrade my scouting more to find out where he is at all times. And okay. then stuff like that. Like you, you like you try to counter what he's going to do based off what you're doing now. It, it's super fucking advanced. You don't have to fully understand that right now. No, no, no. That, that yeah. makes sense. I feel like this, the strategy part actually is, is the to me is the most fun. It's like I can't even – sometimes, I uh, yeah, I need to first survive a little bit longer sure. and have my macro better so I can even have the ability to pick the strat strategic tools. And I feel like right there, I, the game wouldn't even normally have lasted long enough for me. So, um, so the fact that – that you you just totally rewired the way I need to think about engagements is such a big thing, so that I can then start also looking at my uh, my resources and and then plan accordingly. The, you know what the biggest thing to think about is this is actually the number one rule, and this applies to anyone playing StarCraft that doesn't know what they're doing. That, that's like at a point where you're not fully confident about your decisions. You should always think the best way you can take the best fights is not by trying to find the army, and and it's not by trying to go kill all the production. It's about always trying to starve your opponent because everything relies on resources in StarCraft, which is why it's, it's, I feel like it's something that everyone knows, but they don't, they don't really think about it like this. If you look at high level players, so many strategies from a high level player revolve around killing workers, killing workers, killing workers, killing workers, killing workers. Killing workers. And then later it turns into killing bases, killing bases, killing bases, killing bases, trading bases. And you're trying to like, because there, there's also this little bit of fog of war RNG aspect where you don't always know where someone is. So sometimes you might be like, ah, shit, this is really bad for me or something like that. But always be aware of the fact that you need to control economy to control the game. And if you don't think that way, you're playing wrong because if you don't control economy, you don't control fucking anything. Because that's what I was saying to you earlier about... When I was like, yeah, if you want to, early on when you had the economy control, and I was like, okay, so the big thing you need to do here is find a good concave, take the fight, you're going to lose the fight, but that's expected because you have a weaker army, but you have economy advantage, 
So that moment right there would have made sense to fight him if you just went for it because you could remax. And you like if you even kill if he's got an army that is like at 100% and you're at 100% and you drop him down to fucking 55 after the first fight and now you're at 100 again and he's at 55 and he continues to push you, 100 is going to just overwhelm the 55 now and you're going to win the fight. And he and then you could remax again. And cuz you're Zerg and that's what Zerg can do. But he's Protoss, and he's going to be like, give me, like, five minutes. i got to build some carriers. <laughs> like, I need some time. These things take a minute apiece, so it's going to be a while. Uh, so, yeah, like, that's concept right there about that one particular thing. And that didn't exist anymore, though, when you were starving. This game, I have to say, you've made my day. This is, <laughs> I feel like the Gordon Ramsay of StarCraft pretty much held my hand and showed me how to sear that lamb. <laughs> that, like, 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 uh, oh man, thank you. That was really, that was very, very eye opening. Yeah, no, that's good. I, yeah. And then I, I feel like that was a great example. That, I mean, that was a comeback and a half right there. So those, those always feel great. Okay. Uh, so here's what we should do now. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask me any questions at any point in time. I, I, obviously, I'll, I'll answer anything you want to know. But yeah. I would say send me that replay really fast on Discord, sure. and I will now share my screen with you, and then. Uh, I'll run through the replay, especially in the cannon rush part, and I'll give you an idea about what ideally would be happening there and how to understand like what makes sense there. Okay. Let me. Oops. Okay, sure. Just go to, yeah, I was to say, just go to your replays and just literally title it like Vibe June or uh, July 18 or whatever you want to do. Or you got it already. Good job. There you go. Discord. Okay. And then I will jump into that. I'll give you my screen really fast. <clears throat> okay. So now you should see mine. <coughs> and then let's talk about... Or let, I'll let me know when you're in and then I'll, we'll start it up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we'll talk about the cannon rush aspect a little bit here and help you really get confident about dealing with people who do this kind of shit. There are, have you ever heard me talk about the fact that there are three types of cannon rush? Uh, I don't remember. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it. it. It makes a lot of sense when you, uh, when you hear this, but uh, okay. we'll definitely talk about it and make you understand exactly what it is. So you're trying to build an a base, right? He blocks your base, he builds a pylon. Then you go down here. This is all correct so far. For you. Now, when this happens right here, he lets it finish. That's not a right. cannon rush yet. That's just maybe right. an annoying fucking Protoss. It's like, <laughs> I have a pylon. You have to actually kill it now. Uh, which is whatever. It's, it's, it, it, it is a thing. Like it's, it, he's going to delay it even longer now, but he's also going to lose it if, when you kill it. But now he actually cannon rushes you. Now, there are three types of cannon rush are this. You have a fake cannon rush which is someone who wants to make it seem like they're cannon rushing and they want to bait you to do things like cancel a hatchery or pull your drones and you're like, oh God, pull eight drones to attack a pylon. And then he cancels the pylon, has a little bit of a chuckle, then he runs away because you wasted a bunch more money than he did there. Uh, right. That's that's fake, right? Fakes are obvious to tell. And the, re the main reason why fakes are obvious to tell is because if someone ever puts a pylon in the middle of fucking nowhere, it's a fake cannon rush. Like, but this guy obviously right. put it. It makes no sense to put the pile on. Yeah, like if you put a pile on like right here, it would make no sense. Or like right here, it would make no sense. Right. Where putting it here, it made sense only for the fact that he was blocking your hatchery. But for a cannon rush, this looks terrible. Because it's in the middle of put nothing. It in a corner normally somewhere yeah. where you can squeeze in and go into my main. Exactly. Because this thing can be surrounded by like 12 drones now and easily killed right. if you wanted to, which is awful for Protoss. So this is not the greatest. You want to definitely. Remove surface area from the sides of the building by putting them in ways you can block them out and stuff like that So this now there's now what it would be is there so the macro or the sorry the fake cannon rush is obviously if someone is not actually building a forge They're just pretending to cannon rush you, but they never even throw down a cannon uh, And they're just looking for reactions from you, which is fine And then now that they actually have made a cannon you can immediately rule that out It's, it's already now no longer a fake cannon rush because he actually made a forge so now it's one of two things. It's either a macro cannon rush, or which means okay. that he's only going to make a couple cannons and be annoying as fuck, and then he's going to nexus behind it. He's like not even taking gas. He just wants to make you 
waste time dealing with cannons and slow your economy down while he makes his own cannons. Or sorry, while he makes his own ex economy. And then he like is, you know, he's going to end up being like at 35 probes versus your 24 drones or something. And he's like, oh, wow, I'm super fired because you overreacted to this. That's a macro right. cannon rush. And this is starting to look a little bit like that for now because it's in the most awkward. This is like the most non-threatening, awkward location it could be in right now for you. It's just he's cannon rushing a base you don't even own right now. Uh, and then um, the third kind is a high pressure cannon rush. And these are the people who proxy production with cannon rush. Like they're going to go proxy immortals with cannons or like proxy stalkers with cannons. That's like fully invested. That's an all in essentially. So identifying these three different kinds is huge. And now as the game progresses, he throws down two cannons. Every bit extra investment he does goes more towards the fully invested. So one cannon and a pylon could be macro cannon rush because he's literally just saying to himself, I want to make you take longer to expand again. And I hope you make a bunch of links or I hope you pull drones and waste a bunch of time or he just wants again to make you waste a bunch of time while he ex expands but uh, like again two cannons now he might be making that for the purpose of letting one of them finish and then canceling the other one then that could still be a macro cannon rush but then he does this right after and he makes a fucking gateway this is no longer a macro cannon rush Th like this is like th this is now kind of awkward because now he's actually putting production there as well which is a bit more invested. So if it is going to be macro cannon rush, this now has like, like if you were to have like a, the, the best way I can describe this is like, think about like having three stat bars where like, if you have like, or like, like did you ever play, did you ever play like Diablo two, for instance? No, no. Okay. Well in, in Diablo two, you have like a bunch of stat points. You have like a preset amount and you could like allocate them into like what you want oh, to be. Oh, sure. Yeah, like like I want to be speed, yeah exactly speed, yeah. Agility, I'm gonna be whatever, ex right? 100 percent ex exactly. So like, what he's doing is he has a limited amount of total stat points, and now he's kind of like spreading them around between macro and aggressive. So he's kind of making his build two things in one, but it it's making it seem confusing, but it's also weakening both of them. Like it's this is now no longer if he's gonna expand behind it, it's no longer gonna be as strong as it could have been if he just all into you. And if he's gonna uh, if he's gonna actually attack you fully, it's gonna be weaker than it could have been because he's making too many cannons in this spot in this spot that makes no sense. Like he's over investing. Wait, are, you, are, you, are you saying are you saying his gateway is taking away from this? His gateway is taking away from the macro side. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 deep. It's it's pouring it deeper into the aggressive side, less into the macro side. When this right. does not seem threatening at all because it's so fucking far away in the open. Right. Like, this yeah, has so, no pressure yeah. on your ramp at all. And he has no pressure right. in your main at all. He has no pressure on your third base, which is your natural at all. He's got nothing going on that's being aggressive at the moment. But now, this is a huge thing to do in cannon rush games. This is really important to know. Watch the probe. And it leaves. So if the probe leaves, your overlord needs to immediately go down here. Because you need to know if he's going to cannon rush this base. This, right. is, this is like, if you leave this area... This is this is what it is. Like, it, there's nothing you can change here. This is going to become a... Like, if he's going to invest into this, he's at least going to let one of these buildings finish, and this is going to be a thing. But now, if you go check this next space, you can find out if you're going to get cannon rushed further and deeper. It just gives you a better understanding of what you're up against. Because when sure. this Overlord finally gets to the natural, it confirms what he's doing. If there's a nexus or not, essentially. So the probe comes back for a second. And then he's chilling. But you should still definitely be running this way because he can't actually cannon rush your creep, so your hatchery is still safe. That's that's the beautiful thing about Zerg is there is physically nowhere on creep that you can put a cannon that can hit the hatchery. It's impossible. But he could put a cannon like right here, obviously, and it could hit the mineral line or something. But you would you would see that though with your vision of your gas and stuff. So I yeah. Yeah, I remember in your in your bronze GM, you you actually. You know, I, when I when I saw this, I actually got distracted by the mere disappointment. This is not the, with the build I was hoping he would open with, but it ended up working. Um, so so normally, because I know you have us send our overlord to the third, and actually, possibly cancel this if he's cannon rushing yep. it, and then just move somewhere else. Yep. Right, then move somewhere. You make else, him waste a bunch of money because the canceling, yeah, yeah. like just straight up, if he it's builds up more. Oh. It costs more than canceling the hatchery. Yeah, like the, the pylon itself even just costs more than canceling a hatchery. So if he also right, builds right. a cannon, then cancels the cannon. Or if he lets the cannon finish, that's even bigger cost for him. By a, like right. almost double or triple your, what you spent on that. Right. Uh, which just slows him down to make Ravager is going to be more successful. 
But at this point now, so this is a little bit rough for you, right? Because now you can guarantee right. that this base is going to die. So ideally, right. what you'd want to do is you... Uh, uh, let me say this first. This is more important to say first. Then we'll come back to it. So you can see right now at his base, he's making another gateway. He's making a cannon down at his base as well. And he's got a pylon in the wall. And this is still open. But yeah, this wall is a little bit fucking wonky. And he has a ton okay. of investment here. This is a lot of buildings. This makes me think he canceled the, the the gateway at your base, which you also saw he canceled it with your overlord before it left. But because like he needs a gateway for tech path, essentially. But like the fact that he's making a cannon defensively and a gateway, and he's also making more cannons. Now, here's what this means. This is the this is where it gets a little confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. Sure. Aggressive cannon rush is not based off of cannons. It's based off of units that back the cannons up. And he sure. just reset the units by canceling the gateway, which tells you right. one thing. It tells you he made it because he was afraid you were going to pull drones and he wanted to limit surface area. And when he realized the cannons were going to finish, he canceled the gateway. So he's not okay. going aggressive cannon rush anymore. And this is when I wanted you to take two drones off gas because this is now a macro cannon rush. Even though, but here's the thing. It's a really shitty form of a macro cannon rush because he's making like seven cannons before he expands. Why, and why would he ever even put his cannons in the middle of my base? He should have just done the more corner pressure version, right? Uh, like so, up towards my ramp? Yeah, yeah. Is that ever even good what he did? I don't understand. So right. it's not, what he did this game is not good. It's not correct. Uh, it, like it doesn't really flow very well. What he's, what this guy's, I can already tell you what this guy's goal is. His goal is to slow you down and kill your hatcheries and prevent you from expanding and contain you for X amount of time while he expands. That is his entire goal. But what this guy does not understand is, is that he's over investing into doing this by doing what the way he's doing it and making his nexus super late. So he's not actually getting the advantage he's seeking, essentially. His, his, his advantage wants to be the nexus while you don't have a hatchery expansion, that is. And to answer your other question, which is why wouldn't you just put it here? If I if I were in this guy's shoes, 100% what he would say is, I don't want to lose my cannons from a queen on the high ground because you can't shoot high ground when there's a queen there. But it doesn't make any sense because he over-invested like crazy. Right. Like, he should and just he, put yeah. the cannon down there, honestly. So, um, okay, so before we move to the next step, when I'm faced with a cannon rush, usually I, I just do a drone pull. But is there a, uh, and sometimes I do the Roach Ravager thing, which I learned from your videos. Sure. Is there a benefit to one or the other? Or is it just always, this, is it just better to do the Roach Ravager? So the only benefit, this is the only benefit, okay? Uh, the only benefit is, is if you want to not even cancel the hatchery and you want to just straight up defend it and then knock out his cannon rush before your lings are even really, like you can make, still make lings towards the end of it and the queen's at the end of it. If it has, like if he tucks the cannon in the back or something that you have to deal with. But ideally, it's about not letting your natural die and then immediately having a natural while he then starts his own natural afterwards. So you have an advantage of two base to one as a result of saving it without having to cancel it. So Roach Ravager allows me to not have to cancel the hatchery. Roach Ravager allows you to be okay with canceling the hatchery. Because, oh. so like you don't want to cancel it if you pull your drones. If you cancel oh, your hatchery sure. and pull your drones, that's a negative negative right there. It's like, okay, right. well, you pull the drones to still lose the hatchery. That sucks. Right. But if you... Just lost so many but, minerals. Yeah, but the reason why I told you to go Ravagers this game and not pull your drones is because these cannons, even though they're in a weird spot, they can still actually hit drones transferring to your third, which is a problem for pulling drones. And then secondly, you'd have to pull towards your third, which is further distance, which means you're going to get there super late. So that's why I told you just be okay with the fact that this is happening now. And just go Ravagers, because Ravagers can deal with this particular situation so much better now. Even though it's a macro cannon rush, and because you've like you've lost the ability to save this hatchery now. There's no way. This cannon's already finishing by the time you saw it happening. And he's already got two more on the way, which means this cannon could cover those two cannons. And you're going to take damage while you transfer away. It's, n it's a nightmare for drones, essentially. So so if I, were, if I was comfortable just handling that with drones then I might as well just stick to the drones because I can keep my, I can get my base, keep my base up without canceling the, 
the natural and and continue my economy but in this situation where there's all these moving uh, well because of the layout of the situation it's better to go to Rogue Ravager yeah had I been more comfortable with the drone pull and keeping my base I it would actually be more economically beneficial to do that right uh, the drone pull. yeah another thing to say too is is if you're gonna drone pull you have a small window of time where it's gonna be successful like right. basically if, if you there there's a little bit of a gambling game going on here and the earliest you can pull your drones is the second he starts to pile on. But then you have to worry right. about, is it a fake cannon rush? And is he just baiting sure. me? And is he going to make me waste a bunch of money? The another way... Oh, that's true. Yeah, so okay. it's like you, if you pull right off the pylon, you're like... And he's like going fucking Nexus with Gateway. And you're like, oh, well, yeah. I just lost like 80 minerals or like 120 minerals running around for a while with eight drones. And you just right. lost 25 to cancel a pylon. Uh, so that's a little bit of a gamble there. That's why that's a thing. That's a, that's one of the three steps of Cannon Rush that you need to understand. But if you want to pull at the latest possible second, if you don't pull your drones within about the first three seconds of a cannon going down, you're going to fail. You have, And that's where overlords come in. You have to see it happening. So, like, the second a fucking cannon goes down, you're pulling drones. Because if you wait longer than three seconds, if you pull drones at five, at seven, at nine, you're not killing it. Like, it's going to go up and you're going to lose your drones. And then you're going to be like, well, that was a failed pull drone like maneuver there. And now I'm dead. Okay. So you, And that's why this also makes no sense. Even if this didn't exist, I still would have told you not to pull drones. Because you had no Overlord here spotting for this. And this cannon is definitely not three seconds uh, in production. It's 26. Right, right. So you're definitely going to fucking die if you pull drones here. Okay. So overall, with the cannon rush, like how to read cannon rush and openers of it all. Does it make sense so far about what we just talked about? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now, another reaction for you is this. Someone, and this is, so if you pull drones, don't take gas ever. Okay? That's, that. just understand okay. that. That's a thing. Do not mine gas if you pull drones because you cannot afford that shit. You have to make links. Oh, you mean neither gas? Neither. Not even one not, gas. No. Okay. If, you, if you are going to do the strategy of drone pull to fight off the cannons, you oh, cannot okay. fucking take gas at all. Because you'll take gas after it's over. Because if you're mining gas and pulling like 12 drones off the middle line and making queens and making lings, you're gonna have you're gonna be like, I can't afford my queens, I can't afford my lings, but I have 180 gas. And you're gonna be like, gonna, yeah, what are you gonna do with that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can't afford speed. And if you, even if you could, it's not even gonna be done for the next minute and 19 seconds or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's just not useful. So no gas if you drone pull, and if you're gonna go Roach Ravager style. One gas versus macro cannon rush. Two gas versus aggressive cannon rush. And again, you can tell that based off of unit development with cannon rush. If no units, it's macro. If units, yes, it's aggressive. So two gas aggressive, one gas macro. And the reason why is this. Versus macro cannon rush, three ravagers is all you need. And you stop. And you just make fucking mass drones. And expansions and queens like to spread your creep and whatever and inject and stuff but if it's aggressive cannon rush you have to make more than three ravagers because you're going to be fighting stalkers or immortals with the fucking cannon rush and if you only have three ravagers you're going to die and it's also aggressive cannon rush also pairs with one more thing and it's a shield battery because nobody makes okay. shield batteries nobody makes fucking shield batteries if it's a macro cannon rush because it is absolutely fucking pointless to make a shield battery for a cannon that has no way to kill a ravager because Ravagers right. can outrange cannons. So you're just wasting money, essentially. You're like literally flushing money down the toilet as Protoss if you make batteries but, and don't oh. make units. Oh, sure. Yes, you're never going to see shield battery in, in a macro rush. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. it, like, it's also because like they have no priority to, me to rush the, the core because they're rushing the Nexus. And that's the priority over the core. But if it's an aggressive cannon rush, they're making gas and a core before they expand right. because they're not expanding because they're all in you. So... That's how you can tell the difference here. That's why two gases is appropriate versus an aggressive one because you need to not only kill the cannons, but you have to also fight off any units he makes with it. So you're going to be battling back and forth and trying to micro that your best that you can. Uh, okay. But yeah, if it's if it's a macro cannon rush, you just make three ravagers and go fucking crazy on drones because three ravagers can clean up the entire mess. It's just over time. And the amount of... Uh, basically, the strat is, is two rounds of bile from three ravagers kills a cannon. And uh, also, uh, it doesn't quite kill a pylon, but it almost kills a pylon. Because it does 180 per round of bile, and a pylon has 400 health. So it lives with 40 health after two rounds of bile. But you can just literally auto-attack it once, and it dies. So like, if you kill the cannon next to a pylon, 
the cannon dies off just the biles, and then the pylon's gonna get auto attacked once and die. So it's totally it's not a big deal. Uh, but definitely make sure you're not crucifying pylons. Make sure you're always crucifying cannons as a priority. Right, right. And all like if if you ever see the buildings are stacked, you can definitely uh, crucify between them. But like this one's a little scary. So let me say it like this: if this cannon was up one. It would be easy to cannon or to crucible both of them together because you could crucible right there, okay? Like in the very center of the two of them, it would hit both of them, which means your ravagers could stand like right there to do it, which is perfect, like perpendicular lines of distance. Oh sure, yeah. But if it's like this, the only way you could hit that is if your ravager stands like right there without getting hit by the cannon. But the problem with this is, is you need to have ravagers stand like right there, and you don't want to stand like right there, kinda. But it's making okay. it a little bit more awkward because there's angles now that the cannons are reaching that don't happen normally in a straight line, because it's now diagonal. So it's it like if you over it's much easier to overstep in a diagonal line to get shot by cannons. And the thing you want to avoid as much as possible is getting shot by cannons because a ravager gets fucking chunked by a cannon. It does, okay. yeah. Like a ravager only has 128 points and a cannon has 20 fucking damage. So it and it shoots pretty fast. It shoots more than one a second. So it, it will kill your Ravager. And if multiple shots happen, your Ravager, like, you would do one crossbow. It's going to be done. Yeah. yeah, you'll be like, wow, he's already half dead. Okay, i got to be careful now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a little scary to get that one right there. This so, so in that case, so you're saying prioritize, like, don't let the Ravagers really take any damage. Try not to take any damage. One at a time yep. instead of trying to get both cannons and sacrifice them. If, if it has to be one cannon at a time, do one cannon at a time. But if you can easily not lose your Ravagers, you can do two at a time, and that's fine. But yeah, you definitely want to avoid taking damage because you don't want to lose one and remake one. That's the worst thing you can do because it's, you want to be making drones. So, uh, like for instance right here, here's a good way to deal with this. Look at this, these cannons. Where, like if you cross a bile right there, you're going to get shot by one of the cannons, guaranteed. Because you're walking deep into this cannon's range to do that. So what I would say you could do is if, if you're uh, like... I would, and also you have to realize that regen is a thing too. So if you do get shot like once in a while, but it regens up, that's also oh, like acceptable. It's not like the end of the world. But one thing you could do is you could actually run. Here's the crazy thing: you could run three roaches down the ramp, get shot like once or twice by these cannons, go right here, make three ravagers. You know there's no units with this, so there's no threat of making a ravager on the other side of the cannons. And why would it make sense to go on the other side of the cannons with roaches first? There's two reasons. Number one, you're going to take damage, but when you make a Ravager out of it, it fully heals itself. And number two, if you're here, you're perpendicular with the cannons and you can kill both at once without taking any damage. So it's identifying the, the layout to be able to deal with it faster. And then uh, also one thing you could do too is um, uh, if you really wanted to do that as well, you could have actually run three roaches across... And if you actually have enough time, you could just ignore these cannons first. Make three ravagers like right here. After you take some damage to these cannons as you leave your ramp, make three ravagers on this side and immediately push these back away from your hatchery and save the hatchery. You could do that too. So there are options you have, but it's really about identifying angles for you to take advantage of. And then going forward. And then it's, it's, it's a good thing, too, as well, always to have creep. So, like, at this point, I would have definitely said spread your creep here as fast as you can. That way you can uh, have the creep, like, leading to the ramp already so your ravagers can be really fast. Like, your roaches or uh, whatever could be faster about yeah. moving around. And you could also start pre minute Like, think about it like this, too. If you know you're going to expand, you know that you're going to probably be expanding this way because he's blocking you this way currently, and it's annoying. So if you go this way and you already, like, by the time this hatchery finishes, if you already have a creep tumor there from right. here, you have such okay. an advantage already going in the middle of that game. Like, the voider defense follow-up is so much easier because you're like, well, I got creep all the way fucking over here now by the time voids come out. Or, like, already over here by now by the time voids come out because I already worked on it from now. Uh, stuff like that's huge too, right? Like you're So actually, um, sorry, so, the, so two questions. Sure. One is... When those queens, so I have a queen in my main, and then I have in the second hatch, I'm gonna have two, you know, one queen each popping. Do I, I don't need, I don't need to inject either. I can just use those for creep tumors for their first one each. I would say the best way to do it, like you don't want to inject this hatchery because it's gonna die. It's gonna die right. before the inject pops off, and then it's a waste. 
you should inject this hatchery though. And the reason why you should inject okay. this hatchery is because you're making drones with it again. Once you identify that it's a macro rush, you should be making drones and overlords. And uh, that it, there's no benefit you get from throwing a creep tumor down here right now because what it's going to do is it's just going to intersect with the creep tumor that you're putting down right here anyways. It's just going to connect this early, which is not really going to it's not really going to do much for you because you don't need defensive mobility in this location specifically right off the bat, if that makes sense. Right. Like you're not getting okay, attacked by an sense. adept or something like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. And the reason we confirmed then it was a macro hatch, or sorry, not a macro hatch, it was macro a macro based rush, yeah. is because then we noticed that he's got, he's starting to build stuff. He's, he's not sub supplementing this area and he's not built, he's building other things at his, uh, at his natural. Yeah, it's, it's mainly because he canceled the gateway. He put zero effort into making units pair oh, with Oh, right, it. right. That's right. And okay. then you confirmed that he's making gateway and other things here, too, uh, which is fine. Like, this this tells you that this guy, is his again, his build is inefficient because his gameplay is basically hoping that you have no idea what you're doing because he doesn't know what he's doing either, and he's hoping that you make more mistakes than he does because he'll get advantages that way. Because this, again, this makes no sense in this order. If you wanted to go for a fast Stargate, just go for a fast Stargate, and they would be better off than doing this into a super delayed Stargate. Uh, still off of one base economy. But if he's got you contained like this, there's no reason why he can't expand and then go for a Stargate that's like 15 seconds later. But now, by the time the Stargate's done, he's defending a natural that has probes on it instead of one base. Because this, he's, he's playing this like a macro build with one base, essentially. Because he's defending his natural with cannons. And he's not expanding. Right. <laughs> like it yeah, doesn't make that, any yeah. sense. That's why, like, yeah. when you like when you start really understanding the game, you'll be like, you can tell. Like the whole concept of BDG again is efficiency beats non-efficiency. You can tell this is completely not efficient because of the sure. way he's opening the build. It just looks fucked up. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, going back to your uh, your ravagers. So you push into the cannons a couple times, and you end up killing them. And then you can see you've walked into the cannons a few times. Now this Ravager is half dead. And this Ravager yeah. is almost half dead. Like, this is a lot of damage that you ate. When, again, if you like, if you run roaches across, got shot, like, once or twice, fully healed them with Ravagers here and perpendicular killed them, zero damage. Okay, yeah. Much better setup for you already for the going forward. Yeah. And then going down here now, at this point, there was a bunch of fucking biles that were early. I don't know what the hell was yeah. going on. Like, that was, uh, it was a little bit messy for you, for sure. Because that was just like a, <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of wasted time. <laughs> no, no comment. So here's here's a cool way you could do this. Okay, so look at this. Like I'm, I'm gonna. This is like a geometry problem, and I, there is a way you could break this really easy. But okay. if I were to ask you, like it's like it's almost like a math problem. Where like what could you could you make like draw a square and these dots and make it work? <laughs> what do you think would be the fastest way to get rid of this situation? And I'll I'll give you a hint. The answer is two buildings. But what do you think is the fastest way you get rid of this? Oh, that pylon? That's one if of them. I could sacrifice my Ravager. A little that... bit of health to kill that pylon. You don't even have to lose uh, a Ravager for this. Yeah, I guess not. Oh. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. The fastest way is that one pylon controls everything. It does? You're correct on killing the pylon. That's part of it. Oh, wait. There's another part? Yeah, there's two buildings you need to kill. Uh, Just two buildings. Wait, I, I, I mean, I, I would have placed the, the corrosive vial between the pylon and the photon cannon right next to it, but that, I don't... Well, I, okay, you're still going to take damage, though, getting around the cannons if you do that, and you probably lose a Ravager, because your Ravagers are already weak as well. Right, right. So I'll give you one more try, <laughs> and I'll tell you. Wait, oh, wait, <laughs> one second. You said this was a geometry problem. It's, well, it's just understanding oh. range of things. Oh, wait, so the fastest way, then, that means is that the... So there's the topmost cannon. Uh -huh. I ignore that completely. Yep. I kill the rightmost cannon Correct. by going perpendicular from the very right. Uh -huh. And once I've cleared that cannon out, I can now get my Ravager's access to the pylon without taking any damage. Correct. That is exactly okay. what you would do here. And you would kill. You would get it rid of it as fast as possible. Um, uh, okay. Because there is no way those cannons up north of the pylon can cover, the ca can cover it if you clear out that right pylon. And the only reason why the right cannon is a problem is because there's no room south of the pylon. And there's not enough right. room to the right of that cannon between the mineral line to even go without getting shot by it. So if you stand okay. right here, like you said, and you kill the first cannon on the right, you can now walk your Ravagers right here and kill the pylon. Got 
Got it. And then the way he built that, that's just, and then you don't have to even worry about that one or that one. And you, you could even like, uh, you could immediately walk across the map after you, because you just killed that shit. And now if you put a creep teamer down here, your queen could be mobile. Like it, it, this could be your creep spreader. And while it's waiting for energy to creep spread, go finish off the cannons. Go finish off the pylon. Okay. You could just make her okay. do the job of killing the idle buildings that do nothing now. So you can't right. repower them later. But now if you take those ravages, if you get rid of this shit ASAP, like fastly timed, and it's no longer right. a threat, your ravagers could walk across the map right now. And it will, we'll, we'll, su we'll assume this would have taken you like up until like 4.30 to kill it. Because it's like 20 seconds of time is very fair to kill these two buildings. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's how it goes, right? You want to definitely <laughs> we'll avoid talk, that. We'll talk about, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's okay. We explain that already. That's why I was like trying to explain this shit to you. And I was like, no, she's back. Go right. Okay. Go, you get shot. Okay. Very never good. mind. So this was, this should have been three Ravagers only. Everything else exactly, is Exactly. Right. That, that's, and then, that's, yeah. that's why there was so many problems in the early game that I was like, there's no fucking way I can explain all this right now. Because uh, there's concepts you have to really describe to make it make sense. And I, there's, I, I was like, well, do I want to really tell him about the three cannon rush rule right now? No, he's fucking busy, so we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but, like, imagine if you killed these, the, the, the depowered these by killing that cannon and that pylon right now. And then now you take it deeper and you go across the map. It takes you, like, probably 25 seconds to get across the map because Ravagers are pretty right. fast. So we go to, like, 455. Look at what this Protoss has by 455. Your are taking damage. Like nothing. Yeah, he's, yeah he doesn't have a void mean, yet. Oh, he's he, he doesn't. Well, he doesn't even have one yet. You could actually, you could pressure him by killing, uh, this pylon and this cannon together. You could like auto attack that pylon for free all day on the top because it's so far away out of range, and then throw a round of bile in a line like that right there while you're killing that pylon, and then you could kill both of his fucking pylons and his cannon powering this whole setup before because your ravagers would be here already with the timer right. I gave you. And you would easily kill this whole wall before his void even pops. His void just started for 37 seconds. And 37 seconds is more than enough time to kill the pylons and the cannon. And then you could actually, after you kill those three buildings, you could auto attack down the core or the gate or whatever you wanted to kill. And you could cross the bile right there in the center of all three of them. And you could actually oh, kill okay. his whole fucking wall aside from forge. And then the void would probably pop out as you kill these last buildings. And you're like, oh, cool, I'll run away now. After I just did 100, 200, 350, four, uh, 500, 600, 750 minerals worth of damage to your wall. Because it's what all of them cost. And that's so much damage. And then not only that, you reset the fact that now he has to rebuild the gate to rebuild the core to even make another Stargate. Right. So and also no upgrades. Out one void right now. Yep. He only has access to one. And then imagine trying to rebuild that while he's fucking trying to expand. Like, it's just a nightmare for Protoss at that point. You could you could have made such a bigger problem for him at the start of this game uh, if your Ravagers were a little bit more efficient. And that's what happens from somebody who's more efficient. Go ahead. While, while just those three Ravagers were doing their thing the, the whole <clears throat> time, I'm simply now just droning up yep. and making... You're expanding I can, I and droning. I as many hatcheries as it makes sense. Yep. At that point. I would like honestly three. say three hatcheries to start would make sense because you can't afford four hatcheries. It's too much larva. It's, it's also too much money for like the, the cost of the hatcheries. You're going to be like barely able to afford three hatchery production with larva usage with injects and stuff and making queens. But once you had like main base fully saturated with mineral line we're talking about, natural base fully saturated, then you could like take your fourth while you saturate your third base. Or, or like if your third base has like four drones on it, your natural has like 12 drones on it. You could have your fourth base started. That's also fine. Like it's as long as you that, have like sixteen. Means, so so and at that point, if just queens is enough. I know that now that I know yeah. he's got void rays. Because you like the, you already know he's not pressuring the gateways here, and he made a lot of cannons. This is a lot of fucking minerals here. You know he's super far behind in resources because he invested two, four, five, uh, three, four, five cannons with two pylons and a gateway. And then he canceled the gateway, so we got a refund there. But he made so much of an investment here with money. And then he made so much more of an investment here with money. This is a lot of fucking minerals. And that, and then you also, you not only canceled his first gate, you just killed his second gate, if that were to have happened. And there's, like, even, there's two things about this that make sense. The first thing is, if he cancels his first gate, there's no pressure on ground for proxy. That's not, it's not really scary. And the second thing that's under, that you need to understand is, 
is not only did he wall off his base, but he has not been building a unit out of the gateway the entire time. And your overlord has been confirming that for you. So you can tell right. by just taking a moment here to be like, making my drones, making my drones. Or you're over here with your ravagers and you're like, pressure his base, pressure his base. Ah, huh, this gateway never lights up once. I wonder why. He must be doing something else. He must yeah. be going Stargate. Okay. He could be going Robo. He definitely is not going Council or DTs because it also is based off the gateway. So if he's going to do that, it's going to be super fucking inefficient. And you, you, it, so like even if you're wrong, and he does go DTs, if you're making drones, you have more than enough time to make a layer and then make an overseer before DTs come out. If he lets all of his fucking tech die, because you won't even have warp gate. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's all of it just gets deleted, and then it's not even a threat. And if it does happen later, you're going to be like, wait, what? Why did you make four DTs when I have 24 right. roaches or, you know, or like I have scouted your right, base right. now with an overseer and I see a dark shrine. Okay, I, mean, I guess I might as well make some units to defend this or static D. Whatever you want to do, it's it's going to be super delayed. So it would make sense that it's either a Robo or a Stargate, and it makes sense that it's going to probably be a Stargate, simply because the Stargate's more standalone than an, over a Robo. A Robo kind of needs support yeah, from Gateway yeah. to make any fucking sense. Like, you're not going to see two immortals just walking around by themselves. <laughs> it's like, oh, Speedlings, right. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, okay, so, so one question whether okay whether we successfully did the ravager harass like we should have or we're in the situation where we weren't able to sure are we now trying to say hey let's get to our 80 something drones yes. for base saturation as quickly as possible okay yes. not not now try to do only three base saturation and maybe overwhelm him the reason why you can go straight for base saturation right now is because even if you didn't do the ravager attack the fact that your overlord is here is correct. Super fucking correct. I l like normally in most PV uh, ZVPs, I'll say dive the main, dive the main, go, 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 dive the main, dive the main because you know he expanded already. But now this is more important. Watch the fucking gateway and watch the nexus. And if he doesn't make a unit and if he doesn't make a nexus, you're like, okay, yeah, this guy's clearly going fucking Stargate and he's all in his hell with it too. So if I just make drones, and if I just make expansions, it increases the fact that I can make more queens faster. And queens, with four hatchery production of queens, can demolish one Stargate, one base Burnos. Not even close. And then if you have better creep spread, you can see them coming from a mile away as well. And more queens means more creep spread as well. So it's like nothing but advantages for you. And the faster you the faster you saturate your base, it's not even going to be queens all game either. It's just maybe up to like nine queens or something, or ten queens. Like some decent amount, but then you have fast hydras that come out right after because you're so rich, because you skipped the whole ling phase, and you're not even doing anything with that. Like early on, you can still get ling speed eventually. Like maybe when you start hydrogen, maybe also start ling speed, so you can pair them in every now and again. Uh, but you could like skip ling speed initially to go for a layer first, because okay. what do you need ling speed for? He's walled his base in, and he's not right. even expanding, and he's not even making units either. So your lings are literally going to wa walk into a wall with battery cannon. And probably right. Stargate, so they're not going to do much uh, initially. So your advantage definitely is in drones. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then yeah, like, and then at this point, really, it's all just trying to maximize your economy and trying to just pump out your creep and just set up your follow up as fast as you can. Because once you all like the queens could easily be, defend you here, but once you have the hydras, how can he stop you if you're like maxed out at like ten minutes? With 200 supply, and he's only like with the way he's setting up his yeah. build, he's at like 78 supply at 10 minutes. And you're like, oh, you have three voids and one carrier. Okay, I have 50 hydros right now, and you're dead. <laughs> like, there's no way he holds that. But every, pretty much every single game I play, like, because like, yeah, so if I if I just play like alone against no opponent, and I just try to macro as fast as possible, I think, you know, I run. Eight minutes thirty, one can get to max supply. Uh -huh. But if I'm in an actual game, what's like the worst case? I should always be making sure I'm at least maxing out by what, like nine thirty or ten thirty. Um, is there some kind so of gauge? So it depends on how much pressure happens in the game. That changes this number okay. a little bit. But this game particularly, with how this had set up, I would say if you did the things that I was saying at the right times and you know everything was flowing like the way we just described it, if that has how it all went. You could have still maxed out before 10 minutes. Probably like 9.30 or something like that. And that would have been super fast, and it would have been a really clean max out. if, if you, Because, again, it's different between you understanding everything you're doing or me telling you. Because then Absolutely. it's just chaos a little bit. But if you, if you did that full on, you would have had a really fast max. But with the way you're kind of giving yourself a setup here, where you're still mining double gas right now really hard. 
This is going to slow you down like crazy. And we'll talk about that yeah. in a second. I want to make sure you understand this well, as a follow-up, oh, sure. but we'll, we'll come back to that. But your natural is super undersaturated. Your thirds are super undersaturated. And the reason why those are super undersaturated is because I feel like uh, at six and a half minutes now, it's because the natural, like the expansion timings were super fucking late. Like uh, you didn't start this base until the pylon was dead after you killed this entire rush. And then you came back and killed the pylon and then yeah, finally yeah. threw the hatchery down. And then this base was super delayed because uh, your drone was super fucking late at coming out of this hatchery. And the first one you also made on top of that died to a probe. It was mining the minerals and it died to a probe. It got shot by a cannon, I think, once as well. Uh, so it was already starting off kind of weaker. But if you got these hatcheries set up a lot faster, and if, like, this creep right now is already, like, right there, and then you had a hatchery here and here, and it's, like, they were already at, like, 12 drones and, like, 11 drones on the mineral lines, oh, you would have yeah. had such a stronger follow-up to this, and you'd be in such a uh, faster, like, pacing to max out. And another way to confirm all of that is, again... If we go back to economy management of your oh, of your base, yeah. I am totally okay with you leaving three drones on one gas after you make your three ravagers. That's fine. Because you can still easily afford all of your drones while doing that. But just make sure you have a oh, list of priority. Yeah. And that priority is uh, drones first out of larva, and then you take your layer. Like, you do not prioritize, like, you have a 10 larva on the ground, and you're like, oh, time to take a layer now. And time to also get, like, link speed. Like, do not oh, fucking do gas yeah. priorities first. If, as long as you are spinning mineral priorities first, uh, you're good to go. And you won't have a problem there. Because there will come a point when you will, you're going to be, like, still on one gas, which is three drones. And you're going to have, like, 35 oh, drones mining yeah. minerals, or, like, 42 drones mining minerals, which is, like, getting really close to three base full saturation. We're talking, like, at least 12 per mineral line or something like that then you can be like all right now i'll take my layer and i might even have 250 gas in the bank but it's okay because it didn't disrupt my minerals at all which is the biggest no-no you can do for yourself uh that, that's like awful but uh now you can take your layer and then you can take once your layer is done you can take your double evo and your hydrogen but you don't take gases two three four five or six until you're fully saturated on all three bases with minerals because again, you're not dealing with anything on the ground. So what are you de what are you defending against? Void rays. And what's defending them? Queens. You have no need to rush your gas and like multiple sources. Right. And then after that, once you take your fourth base, you're more than welcome to take the gas as you take the fourth base if you want to. And the only reason why that makes sense is because your larva is in an abundance at that point in the game. Because you already have like three hatch, three injects rolling like fucking crazy. And you can be like, oh, cool, I took a fourth. I can fully saturate this bad boy before the hatchery is even done. So it doesn't okay. matter if I take oh, the I gas see. right away. And then you're, okay. you're cranking 85 drones or something like that at that point in the game. And then you just slam out a, sma a massive switch into hydras for the rest of the game. Like hydra focus, right? And then you can still make lurkers yeah. and whatever. Okay, makes sense. Uh, yeah, th I think that that's very helpful because I think part of it is that I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, now I don't know what I need to be prioritizing. So now that you've laid that foundation, I just I need to keep those priorities in mind at those various phases of the game so that I'm remembering to use the larva, for example. Yeah, I'm getting for sure. No, that that's the hardest thing too, right? Like if you do the three ravager counterattack that I was talking about, it's not that hard, but the thing that is, is hard about it is maintaining your injects, maintaining your creep spread, right. maintaining your drone usage, not supply blocking while you're making sure your roaches or your ravagers aren't walking into cannons, but yet they're killing things that are important. Exactly. Okay. So the multitask is a little bit more there. But it, again, like I said before, even if you didn't do a ravager counterattack and you just defended with ravagers and really went crazy on the proper build, you still would have been just fine. The Ravager counter is just a, like a little cherry on top. It's like uh, it's pretty effective in a situation like this because you can, ma if you understand how to maximize time, you can put a lot of pressure on Protoss. Because if this guy makes like 10 cannons early in the game and then he's like, well, I'm going to have super late fucking Stargate now, your Ravagers have a window to do damage. Uh, and then from there, like the game kind of develops into like I feel like we did a really good job talking about the later stages of the game throughout the game, and we went over that as well for a while after it was over. And this yeah. is a, right there. That's a cool trick you can do too. Definitely do that in the future. And there, this is the reason why I told you to do this. 
I told you to do this because you know you're fighting Void Ray, or you know you're fighting Stargate, and the one thing that can fuck you is a uh, open area where voids can go here and then here and then here again like they can bounce and your queens are like right. wait for yeah. us <laughs> like it's okay. not gonna be good for you so i was like yeah definitely like put a creep tumor in the middle of that fucking desert right there so you can actually get some mobility going on because if you have mobility right. not only do you have vision then too but your queens can actually defend void race properly okay so um Okay, so yeah, you're right. Cause we, yeah, we did, we did. You know, once the game started to evolve uh, about the engagements and things, we started to talk a lot about that. So I guess maybe I have, I have two questions. Yeah, go for it. One is the style, the way that we engage, the the way that we, you know, we the push and pull, like you were mentioning, and we um, we kind of just used our mobility, moved around, and avoided the engagement with the actual army. In this case, it was against Protoss, but when, when Terran does, you know, they've got battle cruisers, doors, and whatnot, are we doing something similar like that where we're, we're just going around back and forth, push and pull, and avoiding? You can. You don't always have to play that way, but you totally can. It depends what your composition is, honestly. I see. Uh, like, it, like, it depends on if your army wants to, like, full-on direct engage or if your army wants to uh, run around. And if you were going for, like, if you were going to do something that's, like, Hydra Lurker versus, like, maybe Hydra Lurker Viper versus full-on defensive mech like turtle fucking powered up mech until it, once he's ready to go he's ready to push yeah you definitely want to be mobile there and you want to like maybe use like a changeling or some type of a scout to be like oh look at those units over there that I could easily abduct and kill or like run to the left run to the right try to like pick them apart little by like shave off little bits of Terran when you can definitely don't just ram his fucking base and be like let's go <laughs> like it's not gonna go that well for you usually <laughs> The only time it would make s let me say this really fast, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time it would make sense to ram his fucking base would once again be if he's turtling too hard and he's like, I am only on three bases and you're on six because I am waiting so fucking long to not push out. Of, and like, I'm so afraid of pushing. I'm just really fortifying my base. Then it would be okay if you're like, well, I have maxed army and like 60 larva sitting there because I have a lot of bases and a lot of injects rolling. I have creep continuing to encroach on his base. And I can remax in the snap of a fucking finger when this fight's over. That's the same thing I told you earlier against the Protoss. You can totally push into someone who's power with mobility if you have the ability to remax because you can whittle them down that way too. So then instead of like shaving them off, you would just like engage with like a blinding cloud over a few sets of units and try to get as much right. damage as you can with your initial push. And if you can even somehow snipe the base, that'd be great. But okay. Not wasting time, essentially, because then you can just remax, and then suddenly he's weaker, and you do it again. And it may, the weaker he gets, the harder it is for him to then push and take an expansion. Right. Oh, you know, so I just realized, okay, maybe a different way to ask, uh, kind of along the lines of what I'm, what I'm trying to understand is, okay, let's say we play a game, and neither opponent, my opponent doesn't harass me at all. Yeah. In the early stages, oh, and I don't buy, yeah. bother harassing Clark him Kovic, at thank all. you very much, so man. So we're just basically allowed to freely, freely macro up however we want. Um, if, if we do that... And I let them get to their Protoss or Terran. I let them get to 200 supply, and then I'm also you know, in the process also getting to yeah. 200 supply. Is that is that a situation where pretty much I'm just at at an automatic disadvantage, or is it that Not I, I should have been macroing up and it's um, okay. Not, like it? There are always like future things oh, you can do to like make yeah. your style better. Like you, for instance, you can you can if you're like, well, I know there's no way I'm gonna stop him from going sky toss, and it's it's gonna be a problem. Right. Yeah, that's uh, kind of yeah exactly. You could be like, well, maybe I don't want like, if, what if you don't want to use hydras anymore? What if you want to go for the a little bit more stronger composition of like oh, carapace corruptors? Yeah. And you're like, I'm gonna go for a corruptor style now against this, so I can really take a fight against the carrier. But then you have to worry about things like archons or whatever. There's always some problem with everything. Nothing's perfect. Uh, except for Skytoss, that's the overpowered army in the game. <laughs> no, oh, there's even problems yeah. with that army, honestly. Nothing's actually perfect. Uh, I see. But yeah, like so even if that happens, so even if we just keep macro, you know, like back in StarCraft days, you'd say, "Hey, no rush, 20 minutes." Um, that's still a winnable situation, oh, yeah. but yeah. it comes down to the engagements and things it, and how hard I was. The only time, the only time you should ever feel like you're like, "Well, fuck, this is now going to be really hard." Okay is yeah. when your opponent has half of the map with a power army and you cannot break a base. If he's just like all over scouting and every time you're like, all right, I'm going to push and pull. And he's like, well, I'm going to have an observer over there. Or I have like a, a, a something like a revelation on your army or I scanned you or I have a sensor tower. And he's like never fucking letting you get to an area for you to take an advantage like that. You need to 
that that is the hardest position you can be in where he's got a really strong army and he's just not letting his base die and you're like trying to figure out a way to make that happen that is hard to deal with it's not impossible but then it, you need to be more creative by it Maybe instead of hitting the front, maybe now you start hitting the back. Like, for instance, maybe send a speed overlord through the edge of the map and, like, Nidus is main. So, like, try to go from behind instead of in front now. Oh, sure. Like, but that's super hard to deal with because that is a really hard position to set up for your opponent. Like, it's not easy to be full power army and also be on, like, eight bases. Like, really fast. But right. if that happens to be the case of the game, it means that there probably were some problems along the way to get there. Like, you probably could have done something to prevent that from happening. But most of the time, if someone goes for power, they're going to expand slower. And if someone goes for mobility, they're going to expand faster. It just makes sense because mobility units are cheaper and power units are more expensive. Okay. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, I think my then my, my, my last question kind of is, um, I find myself when, I'm, when I've hit about three base saturation and I'm going to start doing my fourth base, there's this moment where I feel like it's usually between the five and a half, five to seven and a half minute mark yeah. where I get attacked and I get, I kind of get caught with my pants down almost, even though I've kind of been scouting, but I just don't have enough units. Um, is there a, is there a general rule of thumb for, Hey, I should be having made hydras at this time or something. So um, I would sure say that, that, yeah. that that's where your links come in. If it's just, if it's a normal game, you, that's what remember when I told you to scout the first game and I was like, scout the wall. Right. And you like right, right. you like scouted the outside of the wall and ran away. You want to scout the <laughs> right, wall right. all the way to the point to where if someone's blocking it, like literally hug the unit for a second or like hug the wall, like touch it, melee it, and then see right. what's behind the wall. Like count units and look at what the composition looks like. And you can like for instance, if someone has five adepts back there, he's not going like double stargate. If someone has like right off the bat, he's not rushing like five voids in your base in the next fucking thirty seconds or something. Uh, if someone has Immortals and Sentries back there, he's not going for, like, a Colossus timing or, like, a Blink Stalker timing right away or, like, a massive Glaive Adept timing with, like, a, just a Prism. Like, it, it, like, I see. Yeah, like, you, you identify what his composition looks like and you can identify the fact that he can't do something else. Like, if you're worried about getting Charge all in and you scout right, right. Uh, fucking Robo again, you're like, okay, well... Uh, like if it's like immortals with a robo and he's like sitting back there with like three sentries and he's got four stalkers You know, you're not gonna be getting hit by charge lot all in if it's Terran and you scout uh, a Cyclone like three cyclones in or two cyclones and six aliens back there And you're worried about a two-on-one drop even though you didn't yeah. scout it. That's not happening But if you would scout oh, sure if you scout 12 Marines back there, you know, he's not going Hellion cyclone or some shit like that like he's not going for like this battle cruiser rush or something because he's making bio and he's about to fucking pressure you with bio probably. It just lowers the odds of other builds that he could be could that he oh, could have been doing yeah. when you start seeing what he is doing as well. It rules shit out that is could have happened. Is there a general time point when uh, when I should be looking out for that? I think I remember once you said like about 150 supply, I should look for his third or something. It's but. Uh, once you have link speed, which is 330 okay. in the game, you should be okay. sending a link to the thirds. And then you should also be poking the wall periodically. And when I say periodically, that means about every 30 seconds. Okay. So, like, just poke I it see. and just check. Like, and it, you only have to do this for about two minutes. Once you get to, like, uh, like 5.30 towards maybe around, like, six minutes, most of the time you're kind of done. Unless the guy just never takes a third, then it continues. Because then you're getting all in. And you're like, okay, well, what the fuck is this guy actually doing? Then it would be – if you have to, like, six minutes and you're like, there's no third. And I still have no yeah. idea what he's doing. And – He's not attacking me yet. Make an overseer just got his base. Just to give yourself a full read. Because you'll be like, what? Are you like saving for like double port BCs? Or are you actually going like double fucking Stargate Voids or Mass Phoenix? Or what's happening here? Because I don't understand. Because you're super far behind in economy. But yet, you're not attacking me. So like you're letting me get a lead over you. And the only other thing that could be would be like maybe send one Ling around to look for proxy bases. Because that makes no sense to be that far behind. Okay, thank you. I think that's probably the, the the key that I needed, that between three and a half to six minutes, I need to keep poking. If they have not come up with a third base, I need to be ready and brace myself and figure out what they're doing. Or, I guess in a weird situation, they are really just being inefficient. Yeah, um, in which case like it I happens. Like, this guy was inefficient in this game. It happens. Uh, yeah, and just know Terran will always take a base at third later than Protoss will because Terran builds in the main or builds in the natural. But a lot of times Terran will build the fucking natural, uh, the the sorry the the third base in their natural wall. So you'll see it when you scout the wall, and you're like, oh, there it is. So it doesn't have to be at the third for Terran to be a third. Wow. 
Okay, cool. Nice, man. Hell yeah. Any other questions? Thank you so much. No, I think, yeah, I think, um, well, I mean, obviously we could go on for, for hours, but at least for now, I feel like, um, I think I've absorbed a lot. I'm going to review. I've taken a lot of notes. I can't wait to rewatch this as well. <laughs> nice. Um, but, but thank you so, so much. I know the start of this kind of was a, that, that first game was a bit whack, but I'm so glad we got to do this the second toss yeah, that was game good. with two different aspects to it. So yeah, thank man. you so much. Yeah, dude, thanks. Thank you again for doing another coaching lesson as well. And uh, I I hope overall this helps you grow again and it just you know overcome more players and shit. But good luck. Practice hard. Watch the vod and stuff every once in a while just to like get some reminders and refreshers and keep always trying to think about how you can do things better. I uh, try to definitely every every time I one of the best things I can probably say to you that would be like a long term piece of info would be anytime I describe a concept in StarCraft that's or anytime anyone who you believe is a credible source of information. So don't obviously not like a gold player or some shit that's like, I think I know how to play and you're like, But you haven't played in five years and he's like, That oh, doesn't matter. Uh <laughs> but like anyone who like you know, like obviously knows what they're doing to a degree at the game, if they give you like a philosophy of the game especially if they're good at articulating it definitely try to make sure that you can apply that to multiple things it's not always just so simple and cut and dry of one thing so like the push yeah. and pull thing in mobility that definitely applies to more than just hydras versus sky toss right absolutely cool vibe thank you so so much i you know hopefully you're not sick of me now having done no you're great two man sessions yep. i'm gonna definitely take you up on an, an another future session that i'm gonna good. grind it out for a bit reincorporate this but uh i'll continue to you know watch your twitch stream and see you on, on chat but thank you so much yeah thanks dude thanks you very much man you have a super fun uh personality like back and forth when we do coaching lessons so it's super easy to talk to you and awesome. uh Dude, thank, thank you again. I appreciate all this. You're throwing support a, a lot my way by doing coaching lessons, so I appreciate that a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for you, man. All the power to you. Go fucking own some ladder. <laughs> Dude, all right. Well, it, I guess 10 plus years in the making, Masters is, you know, ever <laughs> close, closer and closer, one coaching session at a time. So. Yeah, right? That's almost how it goes. Uh, <laughs> but, y'all, dude, have a good rest of your night, man. Thank you. Much love. Thank you, Vibe. Talk yep. to you in chat. See you later. Right. Thank you. See you, dude. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys, that has been a coaching lesson with Brown Ranger. He's a super nice guy. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. That, uh, that was a double header again. But thank you guys for watching. I hope uh, this helps you in your own games and you found some information here pretty useful for yourself. But I will see you guys in the next video of whatever that might be. So until then, have a good time playing some StarCraft or, or not. Whatever you want to do. You're the boss, dude. You're the boss. Uh, but yo, thanks and see you in the next video. See you next time. Peace guys.